Talking Heads, everybody, episode 115, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news and looking better than ever. Oh my god, I love the new image. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, I'm Jeff. I'm John. Wait, wait, wait. You're right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Presenting his lordship. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the one, Thank the only. <laughs> That's right, I have received Lordship title. Uh, <laughs> you may all pay homage in chat. <laughs> I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Uh, so for those who don't know, uh, uh, so around John's office they call him uh, the, the Grandmaster Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> Grand Lord uh, Hops and Brews. <laughs> and uh, so for Christmas, uh, his company actually went out and bought him a lordship. Yes. <laughs> it was it was this gift. This is actually pretty fun. Uh, it, was, it was pretty cool that, uh, that the whole sales group all pitched in yeah. a couple bucks and all uh, purchased me this. And apparently the, all it was was like they sent back a PDF and... Um, uh, of the certificate and all, like, hey, here's your code and everything to go yeah. see see your legitimacy, and uh, but they didn't actually give you like a nice looking certificate, so they, they wouldn't put it a nice certificate. Okay, I'm getting uh, lots of buzz chat audio, not good. Um, your can audio all interesting. Oh no, that yeah. whole intro. Yeah, that was too good. I know. <laughs> This is a total Jason move. Yeah. Totally something Jason would pull. Alright. Let's dive in, shall we? Dissect this. That's right. Order. We're just too loud. Well, it sounds good through there. It does not apparently sound good through... Uh... Oh, wait, hold on. Hang on. I think I might know the issue. Well, no, that's no. not it. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, severe audio, bad audio. Let's let's take a look at what it sounds like after the 16 second ad <laughs> that I have to do. Be right. right. Yeah, let's go skip it. Uh, bear with me. Working on it. And then that's just gonna loop back. Right. <laughs> Is it just echoey or is it clipping? It, it's not clipping on my screen. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> Jason's fun. <laughs> by heart it's so well. Is it too high? Is it too low? Because you guys have said both at this point. Is it clipping? Is it just echo? It's really tinny. Yeah, in interesting. It almost, oh, hold it almost on. Like there's an effect uh, on. Hold on. Was there an effect? Uh, yeah, there might be an effect on. Oh, FX was on. <laughs> I called it. So I took the soundboard with me to Vegas. Okay, we should be fixed now. Let me yeah. know if we're fixed. Yeah. Like clap once if we're fixed. Twice twice if we're, we're still bad. Um, so yeah, no, this had an auto tune on. Also my EQ was thrown way out of whack. And with echo, echo and tinny. Yeah, and because I plugged in the headphones of this and the monitor sounds just fine, but the monitor doesn't uh, play back any of the, the effects. Winner, hey, there we go. Not clipping, it's just echoing. One clap. All right. Oh, we're good. good. That's good. Now we're good. It's good. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> and we lost Andrew. I fixed stuff. <laughs> a... Ah, as I knocked my glasses off. Holy crap. Oh, welcome to Talking Heads, episode 115. You're once with the last year latest beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. No, no, no. Hold on. Do it right. <laughs> there we go. That's a different one. That's a different one. I had two of them queued up, so you can go in. <laughs> Introducing his lordship, Hops and Brews. <laughs> That's right. I had the whole chorus going. I played the wrong one first. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Welcome to the show. Uh, I don't promise the rest of it's going to go as smoothly. Uh, anyway, uh, 
if you uh, have, have not seen the show before, uh, shame on you. You should join more often. Uh, but uh, we go through about 20 minutes of beer news, uh, about an hour and a half of tech news, and then whatever the heck we feel like at the end. Uh, it could be games, could be entertainment, could be pop culture. Usually it's Star Trek. Yeah, usually it's Star uh, Trek. And we try to throw a little Q&A. Right. Uh, toward the end, we try to throw Q&A. So try to save your questions toward that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will try to give uh, uh, some questions noticed during the show, but I don't guarantee it. Yeah. Uh, we usually give at least 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. So if you have a burning question, stay to the end. Yep. Um, but feel free to super chat. Yep, exactly. Yeah, if you super chat, uh, I can give brief answers, but I'm not going to like take it completely off the rails unless your question's just like mind-bogglingly good. Yeah. Uh, we will get, we do read all super chats on the air unless they are not family friendly. So keep them family friendly. Uh, this is an overall family friendly show. We try to keep uh, language and content both appropriate, although we do drink alcohol on the show. Uh, also, if you are drinking something, uh, alcoholic or not alcoholic, let me know in the chat and we do some uh, early show shout outs. Yes. So. Uh, Picard in one week. I know, don't start that chat yet. Uh, it's literally the last item on, on the show because I can't help myself. <laughs> because you know if we started it, it would go like so long we'd, we'd miss so many other subjects. I know. Anyway, John, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking a brand new beer I received from Stone Brewing. Yay! It is actually their lowest ABV beer though. It's a Four? It's a four percent four flat. Four flat. Right. Four percent hazy uh, session IPA, yeah. which I found personally quite delicious. But for a, a session IPA. Yeah, uh, I've actually been wanting some kind of a session beer lately, like a uh, something just light. Yeah, Steve and I had uh, some all day IPAs in Vegas. Those were fantastic. Yes, an so amazing this, way to end the week. Kind of funny is I thought of that beer and was expecting something like that. This is nothing like that. Oh, really? Yeah, this is nothing like that. Genuine hazy IPA just in a session. Yes. I'm on board. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I like it. They, they, they sent me out of this nice You're... packet flyer and everything. So I already drank one. Nice. And you can have the dented one. Oh, of the, course. The drop during um, B-roll. Only the best for his lordship. <laughs> uh, Skull, Avery Brewing, uh, barrel-aged vanilla bean stout. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I wa like that. Water and coffee at 11 p.m. Very nice. Vodka and lime. Uh, That's a good drink. Ginger lemon tea. Uh, That's also a good drink. Montgomery Brewing Hop Junkies Pineapple IPA from Novella Hub. Ooh. Nice. That sounds delicious. Yes. I I love pineapples and I love IPA. That sounds uh, that sounds delicious. All right. All right. So Never Ending Haze IPA, Stone Brewing. And Scotty says he's off to bed because we're on the wrong coast. You're on the wrong coast. Always thinking of yourselves first, probably because you're there three hours before we are. Oh, come on. That was a good joke. That deserved a chuckle. <laughs> oh, stupid. I was like, that's such a dumb thing. <laughs> that was a dumb one, but it was good. That's <laughs> all I have, dang it. <laughs> but I found it more impressive that you just came up with it off the cuff. Thank you. That was more impressive. Thank you. Ah, uh, ooh, wow. Yes. Big hop notes. Wow. Big hop notes. Not expected out of a session. No. Ooh. This has some flavor to it. Yes. Oh, I am so on board. Oh, wow. That's good. 4%. That's impressive. Right? That's seriously impressive. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I have I specifically did not watch your review of this because yeah. I, I knew you were, we were going to yeah. I wanted to go in blind. And, and I'm really glad I did. Yeah, no, this was, uh, I mean, it's not the world's greatest beer, but mm -hmm. um, the fact that it is that haziness, there's this big hop, and I mean big tropical yeah. hop. Yeah, this is classic stone uh, citron mosaic. Just that, And that's exactly, I found out that's yeah. exactly what's in this. Yeah! yeah so. Um, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm learning this, along with all of you. <laughs> Um, no, it, it's oh. it's just a nice beer. Whereas the all day IPA kind of has that old school IPA, the grassy notes, mm -hmm. the bittering. This definitely has more of that tropical feel. That I want to drink this in the hot weather because I kind of have a tropical beer drink. Yeah. So yeah. And, and I like that the body's a little bit thicker than uh, all day. It is. Um, it's not medium, but it's just a little thicker. Right. This has all of the flavor I want out of a hazy. It has every last bit of it. Without it's, the burningness. Right. There, there's still that little bit of a twinge that I feel in the back of my throat. Yeah. Um, but it's not 
heavy or super acidic. And, and I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that to the end. Yes, uh, I did I did yeah. point out, that, yeah, right about here, stuff starts to it's change. It starts to burn a little bit, right. Well, it doesn't burn, but there's, there's the beer changes. Right. The beer right. will change. But uh, not lacking on flavor, no. uh, especially hop. I'm, I'm really surprised I guess the hops right, too. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, those are two, like, the big, hazy ones. But, right. Yeah, no, that's but, all. I mean, uh, th- those are those are the ones that Stone's kind of, like, known for. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and putting, like, a pound in each. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, like, a pound in each, like, 12 ounces. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Wait, that math doesn't add up. <laughs> the physics are all confused. All right. Uh, let's dive into the show. That's right. So, unfortunately, we're going to dive into a little bit of sad beer yeah. news. So, Boulder Brewing has been in the news, honestly, for it seems like the last two months almost. Yeah. Uh, we're dead. No, we're not. Hey, we have a new buyer. Ooh, we're dead uh, again. Yeah. Uh, uh, and essentially, that's really what it was. <laughs> pretty much it. And uh, in three days, they will be officially dead 100%. Um, they're not bottling. They're not brewing. They're not yeah, licensing. They're selling their equipment. They're, they're selling done. the beer, the, the the brewery location. Um, the only thing is the contract that they are for uh, that they had for Sleeping Giant Brewery will still continue to brew the standard staple beer that they have till the contract runs out. Yeah, and that is it. And then that will be the official end of Boulder Beer. <laughs> Uh, Super Chat, Big Big Spoon. Uh, John, you need some Mitch Hedberg glasses. You know, I actually do wear uh, he did, blue, he... blue ones for work yeah. that look just like them. Yep. <laughs> um, actually, I have some out in the garage. <laughs> some blue uh, UV version? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. some, some nice big ones, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I They're have... a little more modern than what he wore, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, I, mine are. But I have like three huge incandescent lights are right above my desk and it's a tiny office that's all white yep. uh, and then I have three big monitors just like staring at me it's just like oh, it hurt. if I don't wear my glasses my eyes hurt uh, and then five dollar big big spoon uh, sorry I missed this one earlier sounds like it's a it's in the bathroom or two audio sources boop time uh, no we're no. J- John's an expensive boop <laughs> I, 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 I gotta say um, but no that was before we fixed the audio uh, and then Scott uh, says, John better break out the blue poison while I'm gone. What blue poison do you speak of? Yeah. I, I know not of this, I uh, not of this. strange mix. <laughs> Maybe we'll have it at the end when we talk about something. <laughs> something related to a blue a alcoholic. Blue alcoholic beverage. Right. <laughs> there we go. Now I, now I won't miss the super chats. Um, so I use Restream to, uh, sorry, so Boulder Brewing, they're, they're dead. They're, they'll uh, be dead in three days. Yeah, it, it's kind of like the end of the story. Yeah, so. they, they just they just decided to quit, and that was it. They didn't really give a reason in the article. Yeah. Just saying, nope, I'm sorry, we're done. We got saved, but we're done. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, so I use uh, Restream to consolidate my Discord and my YouTube chat during the stream, so I can keep an eye on everything up there. So if I'm looking up there, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Also, I have my YouTube monitor set up just on the side. Uh, of that so I can kind of make sure hey the stream is healthy how many people do we have online is there any weird frame skips going on uh, and, and that kind of thing um, unfortunately when you display only half a window of the YouTube monitor it cuts off all of your chats so you don't get notified of super chats and restream used to highlight super chats it doesn't anymore so if I have them both even split screen you don't see any super chats it, it'll say super chat two dollars and, and a name. And then it, it scrolls on by. Right, but it won't actually, like, highlight it. Uh, oh, and uh, $20. There we go. Where did I miss that? There he is. Uh, $20. <laughs> Hops and Prunes. Boop, Jeff. Hey, you're getting the money, not me. Boop. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> now you're just going to get 20 bucks yeah. <laughs> thrown at you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, sorry, I don't have the, the dancing cuts for that, yeah. that uh, Bite My Bits does. but uh, I mean, we can film me doing it, and you can just show me yeah. doing it. Uh, or we can just steal his. Yeah. Um, but yeah. His law demandeth a boop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Moving right along. Uh, John, you're finally turning 21 this year. That's right. I am. I am finally <laughs> turning 21 this year. I can drink. Um, and if you are going to be turning 21 uh, this year at all, you know who wants to buy you your first beer? 
Natty Light. That's right. Natty Light will buy you your first beer if you turn 21 this year at any point of the year. Yes, the 21st of every month, uh, they will be retweeting out uh, basically their, their birthday wishes to everyone. Uh, and if you, it's it's basically follow them, and then if you tweet like an animation or a, or a birthday cake, yeah. or hey, I turned twenty-one. So I this turned, month. You have to show some, uh, something like that, and then and then also show them some form of proof of this is my birthday. I'm turning twenty-one. They will, uh, uh, and you go and buy one of their beers. Mm-hmm. They will then reimburse you for that beer. Yes. So they will essentially, and it's at any time throughout uh, January first through December thirty-first. Uh, Lacey says, hey, Jeff, that beer looks delish. Thank you, Lacey. You should go get one. It is very good. It's fantastic. Uh, I know her, so. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't see no super chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by my bits, uh, Nickelback boop. Uh, Nickelback cheap boop. Don't lie. Boop. The Lord is not pleased. $1.99. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? I did look. Uh, there's one sad fact about this beer. Hmm. Bud Light Orange is stronger than this beer. I know. Yeah. I know. This like, has three times the flavor, though. But, yeah. <laughs> Bud Light Orange, 4.2. 4.2. Yep. 4.2. Yep. <laughs> look at this <laughs> photograph. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you're turning 21 anytime this year, make sure to. I guess follow Natty Light on Twitter if you want to get reimbursed for a Natty Light in celebration of your 21st birthday. Yeah, uh, I don't think anyone's going to buy that. No. <laughs> Although they, they have been doing some pretty cool uh, free promotional stuff. Yes. Um, Budweiser and all of them, they have been doing that. Um, yeah, so, well, um, you remember that uh, that awesome whiskey I brought on? Oh, which one? There was that... Uh, that that, that the, clear one? Yeah, the clear one. Yeah, the, the five one. second aged whiskey. Yeah, that whiskey that was just so good. <laughs> I literally dumped the rest out. It was. It was yeah, it was delicious. Yeah, that stuff. <laughs> that stuff. Speaking, of course, of the PBR whiskey. Yes. <laughs> PBR has been making the rounds recently of new inva- uh, inventive... I wouldn't call it innovative. Innovative? I oh, would stop yeah. shy of that. Okay. New flavors. <laughs> Better. They're trying to they're trying to broaden their demographic. <laughs> yes. It, they did the uh, natty alcohol free, the imperial mm-hmm. or not natty, but sorry, PBR alcohol free, the imperial PBR, which I've actually had. It's okay. Um, they did the chocolate PBR, which mm-hmm. apparently I hear tastes just like Yuhu. Yeah. So that sounds delicious. Well, PBR is coming out with their first IPA. Yes, they are. Uh, it's actually coming out under a new label called Captain PBR. Yes. Captain PBR. Um, Captain. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, Captain PBR. Uh, did they announce an ABV for this? I don't yes. remember. Uh, okay. Well, not on this article. I had to go look it up. It's yeah. a session beer. Yeah. It's it's, so a, it's a four or five. Yeah. Okay. It's a four or five. Which percent. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so essentially, it's still the same ABV as Paps. Yeah. Uh, but it's supposed to be just a hoppy amber, a hoppy ale yeah. version. Um, an interesting thing also that I found out is they are renaming and rebranding their tap room uh, in Milwaukee as it used to be called the, oh gosh, what was it? Kind of just like the the Paps Test Room. But now they're calling it the um, uh, Captain's pa- Paps Pilot House. Pilot House. Okay. So that, if you now go there... That's where they're going to have all their new experimental PAPs. And they even talked about doing a whole liquor system as well. So they're going to be expanding liquors. Hmm. So, so we might see a PBR gin, a PBR I, vodka. I wouldn't mind if they got into some clear spirits like gin and vodka. were yeah. going to be my first two. Um, when you get into the more complex age spirits, you know, the darker rums, the, the whiskeys. The stuff that s- takes age? Yeah, and, and age in my experience, is one thing you can't fake in in life and in craft. <laughs> uh, you know, occasionally uh, something sneaks through the cracks and you go, oh, that's not a half bad that's four not... year or something. Yeah. You know, wow, Still you're really... four years. <laughs> wow, you're really smart for a grad student, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, you can't fake age. And, and my problem with the original PBR whiskey 
was they were trying to fake age. They, they said it's a five second aged whiskey so we can call it a whiskey. Yeah, I think it was novelty more it, than... It was, but it was a terrible Oh, it was, it was corn mash. It was horrible. It was just corn. It was moonshine corn mash. Yeah, so some people are saying we needed to barrel age it. We actually considered barrel aging yeah. it, but the problem is... So I actually have a barrel for aging spirits. Um, when you age it in a, in a 750 mil uh, barrel... It ages very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, like over the course of a couple of days, days or even a week or two, um, it will turn golden and then, and then a dark brown. Um, and it also depends on what other spirits you aged in there first. And this is a virgin cask. It has never had anything in it. So before I start aging some things, I would actually like to age maybe a rum or... Something sweeter. Maybe even just put a already aged thing in there and then just add some oak flavor. Right. Um... Uh, Let it soak it up first. Maybe a cognac. That would be good. You nice. know, so, so, some nice, thick, sweet. Something that's going to complement that young virgin oak. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, if you just dump the PBR in there, you're going to have oaky tasting crappy whiskey. Yeah. Um, where I want a little bit more complexity. So if we're going to age it, I'd like to, again, do it right. And uh, But even then, you can't full age. Three weeks in a barrel is still just going to be three weeks in a barrel. Yeah. So, but um, I mean, it's a lot. Longer than yes, five seconds. That is true. <laughs> Way so, longer than five seconds. But only uh, this beer right now currently is only available in Chicago and Milwaukee. Yeah. So it is planned on being nationwide distributed, but currently right now it is available as of today. Today is the release date, mm -hmm. um, but it is only available in those two locations. Right. So. All right. And just like that, we are right back on time, 22 minutes in, into beer news. Yeah. Look at that. little tech difficulty, pretty yeah. much. I'll take that. Uh, so for those who don't follow me on Twitter, I'll go ahead and share my uh, <laughs> how my day went. Ah, here we go. Uh, look for this in a new hardware review coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to strap an AMD processor on and see what it can do. That's right. Uh, unfortunately, this is underclocking my run speed right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> that one, your, your East Coast was better. <laughs> <laughs> they were both good. Ah, whatever. Uh, they were both good. Uh, anyway, I'm fine. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any serious damage. I guess I uh, tore a muscle and possibly a ligament or some combination of the two. Um, and uh, it's not my Achilles. I was really afraid it was the Achilles oh, yeah. at first from how it was hurting. But I actually did this before I went to Vegas. And then I walked with like a torn muscle for like a week in my ankle. Uh, and it's right behind the ball of your ankle. It's the muscle that stretches down underneath. Oh, okay. And uh, it only does it when I like extend uh, my, my foot. And so I have absolutely no pain unless I move wrong. And then it is this intense shearing, tearing, burning pain, very, very localized in one small spot. Like a nail. Dink. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> like someone stuck a knife in my side. And then as soon as I like release the muscle, it's gone. Oh. Like, like it, it fleets just as quickly. Uh, so it's it's kind of a weird injury. Um, as long as I'm like normal walking speed, even without a brace, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, but it's gotten to the point, it, it's going on like three weeks now. It's like, I should get that looked at. So I'm okay. I'm okay. But still, the commitment Jeff puts into the show for CES for all of you. That's right. Uh, it, it was I'm, a long week. Uh, and, and by the way, so I went to CES knowing we're going to walk a long distance. I think we averaged six miles a day. <laughs> Just walking the hotels. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Uh, Linus hobbled you to take out the competition. Yeah, he was afraid I was going to hit 10 million first. That's, <laughs> that's what that was. That's what it was. Yeah. Underhanded little... Yeah, went over there, crowbarred your <laughs> ankle. <laughs> Bam! Take that! T Tanya Harding to me. <laughs> <laughs> That'll stop your subs. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and stay down! <laughs> this coming from the guy who didn't do a video for six months and still gained 20,000 followers. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> uh, hits me in the knee. I drop to my knees. I'm still taller than him. Uh, well, and yeah, he, I, I he see you. And by the way, I see you down in chat to bite my bits. You, yeah. you can't sneak in. He, uh, he wanted to talk to you eye to eye. That's right. Oh, super chat. Bite my bits. Uh, that's why you don't kick strippers. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeff and Steve's CES coverage was fantastic. Thank you guys so much. That was so much fun. Uh, the live show was absolutely the highlight of, <laughs> that, of was, that event. That was, that was so much fun to chat in. That was such a good live show. 
uh, man, that was so much fun. Uh, so th thank you, Adam. Thank you, Jason, for joining me on that show. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it half as much as I did. Uh, just being in the same room with those two guys and, and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Steve was there too. Steve was there. He was in the bathroom. Yeah, Steve was there too. But no, that was uh, that was an incredible live stream. It could not have gone more smooth. Um, even with like crappy hotel Wi-Fi and, and improvised setup, it, uh, it worked pretty well. Yeah. And uh, heck of a lot of fun. If you haven't watched that stream, go go back and watch that stream. Hey, Adam's watching tonight. Awesome. Yeah. How's it going, buddy? Well, isn't he? He's, he's <laughs> sick. He's under the weather. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Been, he's been sick basically so, since he got back. Yeah, so feel uh, better. So uh, at the beginning of one of the videos, um, I think it's my day two coverage, we were up until 2.30 in the morning that morning uh, doing some stuff. And uh, we had a 9 a.m. appointment uh, that I had to hit. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was like 2.30, I'm going back to my hotel room. We wake up at 7.00. Because we've also got to start Ubering or driving over there at 8. And we get to the hotel at like 8.40 and we're walking through trying to find the place. And uh, and I'm actually feeling like really good. Yeah. Like I'm like, let's do uh, this. Yeah. And, uh, and Adam's dragging behind me. And so I turned on the vlog camera and I said, good morning. It is day two here at CES. How you doing, Adam? And he goes, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> and so whenever uh, the whole trip... Any, anytime anything went wrong for like the other person, go, we'd go, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> the other one. It was good. Um, I also feel like I'm patient zero because I'm the only one that I encountered that didn't get sick. <laughs> Steve gets sick? I don't think Steve got sick either. It might be Steve. It yeah. might be Steve. Well, then, then you or Steve then just walked out of there like unscathed. But seriously, I would like shake someone's hand and 12 hours later they would drop. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to like everyone. Even like oh. people I would fist bump. Well, it's, it's all the alcohol you guys drank just killed everything. I actually off. didn't drink that much. Really? I didn't. Uh. Yeah, it was it was a it was a weird week. Uh, I went to one party. I had two drinks uh, on the Wednesday night party, and I had half a drink <laughs> on the Thursday night party, and that's it. That's that's a that's an interesting phrase. Of uh, I didn't drink a whole lot. It's been a weird week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, when I went to the doctor today, I had to fill out a survey about how much I drank. <laughs> so you're like, oh, thank goodness, last week. Right. No. <laughs> um, but uh, it's like, how many days do you consume alcohol? And, it, and, uh, and the answers were like zero to two, uh, three to four, or more than four. And I'm like, ooh, technically it's more than four. And then I said, well, how many drinks? Zero to two? And I'm like, oh, yeah, zero to two. Because yeah. when I drink, it's like one beer except on Wednesdays. Yeah. Um, Wednesdays, I'll, I'll indulge myself with two, sometimes three. Yeah, you, yeah usually, other than... This day, yeah. it's you or like something like a sporting event on like a Sunday right. or something like that. But other ninety nine percent of the time, it's if I have a drink, it's one. Drink. It's one. Right. If I even have yeah. one, yeah. So it was... uh, then usually the other beverage of choice is just water. Yeah. Anyway, we've delayed the tech news long enough, uh, so let's get into that now. Uh, do you need any more storage? Uh, I could always use more storage. Yeah, I know Byte My Bits could use at least 20 more gigs. I'm, I'm sure he already filled up 284 terabytes worth of Plex. Probably. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, Petabyte Project incoming. <laughs> Byte My Bits 2020. You heard it here first. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so... Seagate. Seagate. Uh, they're actually the second manufacturer to announce one of these capacity drives. Uh, Western Digital announced a couple of weeks ago that they would be bringing 18 terabyte drives to the market in 2020. Seagate has actually one upped them, saying that they will bring both 18 and 20 terabyte drives to the market as of 2020. Um, now, drive capacities obviously continue to go up, uh, much to the, the delight of me. <laughs> um, as, as someone, uh, my home server is actually only 24 terabytes. It's not ginormous yeah. by, by, by any means. Uh, it's six, six terabyte drives in a RAID Z2. Uh, so it's uh, double, double fault, uh, tolerance. Um, and, uh, and pretty, uh, pretty easy or pretty good, good size, but enough for what I have. Uh, on Adam says he still hasn't recovered. And uh, yeah, Jason got sick the day after we streamed. So literally, literally the last day I saw Jason, he just dropped like a fly. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, I'm patient zero. I apologize. Whenever I said goodbye to anyone, they got sick. Same thing happened to E-Technics guys. Uh, I guess Andy and Pete both went home sick. And, uh, and like I said goodbye to them on, on, on Friday. And, uh, and they both got sick on Sunday. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, all over the place. I think Paul got sick. Yeah, everyone Jeez. got sick. Um, 
Anyway, uh, so the reason this one's actually a little bit bigger deal than just, hey, we added two more terabytes, go. guys, Woo-hoo. is they're actually changing their manufacturing technique and storage technique for the drives. They're inter- uh, so their 16 terabyte drives and down have used what's called uh, CMR, or conventional magnetic recording. So everyone kind of knows what that is. It's a magnetic platter with a reader arm on top. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. You put <laughs> nine platters in, you get yourself 16 or 18 terabytes. Um, the new drives are set to go live um, with CAGR compound and or no, not CAGR. CRM. Uh, C, uh, is it that? CMR C- to SMR. SM. Yeah, sorry, SMR. Uh, what was Sling lead magnetic. Thank you. I was looking for the, yeah, like there's too many. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. There's too many on and this the It's really small. Well, yeah, shing- shingled magnetic recording. Basically, they're, from what I understand, it's going to be almost like a scaled texture um, where where the magnetic platters are actually shingled on top of it. Um, so instead of just a perfectly flat platter, it'll yeah. actually, I believe, have like some 3D ridges to it. So now, when I say ridges, I'm talking like, microscopic, n- nanometer, yeah. you know, level, level ridges. Um, uh, I'm, I'm assuming if you felt it, you're probably not going to feel anything. Uh, you can't feel modern platters. And modern yeah. platters still have ridges, kind of like a record player. Mm-hmm. There, uh, but uh, your uh, a human hair, I guess, is a hundred times the depth of a uh, uh, of one of the ridges Jeez. on a on a, yeah. on a current hard drive platter. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, but shingling them, uh, they're they're anticipating being able to start exponentially growing the hard drive market again, uh, or not exponentially, but uh, increasing capacities up to 20% per year over year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's... Which is quite significant. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when you consider 20% of, of 20 terabytes, uh, of 20 terabytes, all of a sudden we're at 24, then we're at, you know, yeah. uh, almost 30, you know, just over two Every, years. Yeah, we're... So five years from now, 50 terabyte hard drives, right. single, single hard drive. Right. Exactly. Um, By that time, I will then buy a 20 terabyte hard drive because it'll be in my price range. Right. I buy the refurb six terabytes right now because they're a hundred bucks a piece yeah. and they're phenomenally reliable. Uh, Five dollar big, big big spoon. spoon. Where'd you go? Right uh, there. there we go. Uh, how much you get those blue glasses in the garage for bunny beer? Um, I, I assume it's talking. Oh, bunny beer. That makes me. That's me. Yeah. Bunny beer. Uh, yeah. It's funny. <laughs> you, you have nicknames I don't know about. Apparently. How is that? Uh, <laughs> big big spoon is very clever. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, there's usually not a name John has that I can't make fun of. <laughs> Isn't that right, sober Steven Tyler? Oh, shut up. No. <laughs> I think I'm more drunk than Steven Tyler is now. That's probably true. Uh, if I had the lips of Steven Tyler. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, pricing has not yet been announced, but this is going to be enterprise level storage. This is not going to be consumer level drives. Uh, even the consumer level drives are still in the 10 and 14 terabyte range. So their 16 and 18s have been reserved for enterprise customers to this point. Uh, I believe that even their iron NAS have been uh, uh, peaking out at 16. Um, but uh, Sam, uh, Seagate's 16 terabyte Exos drives uh, have been $420, and their Iron Wolf NAS drives have been $475. Probably expect similar or five, higher. Yeah, it'd probably sound like around five plus. 500, 550, I would yeah. guess for a, a 20 terabyte, maybe even a little bit more because it's a new manufacturing technique. You, yeah, you have to pay that early adopter fee. Um, and then you find out the hard drives crash all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's just how it works. Yeah. Um, but no, totally excited. Uh, I, I love to see capacities continuing to rise. Oh, yeah. uh, year, I mean, years after people said magnetic storage is dead, maybe for the desktop, but certainly not for enterprise and big data. No, um, and not even by a long shot. No, and I, I'm so happy with the twenty uh, percent jump. That sounds amazing. That mm-hmm. I thought to me was more impressive than yeah. just the the twenty gig size or yeah. twenty terabyte size. Yeah, the, the fact that they think this this uh, manufacturing technique can scale linearly 20 percent year over year yeah. uh and continue delivering capacities that's uh four years from now you get a 50 terabyte i think or 48 or something mm-hmm. like that uh so it, it's it's a pretty impressive jump yeah uh, imagine two drives 100 terabytes <laughs> <laughs> that's if you rate zero yeah. <laughs> 100 terabytes i don't care if i lose one <laughs> no nope, i just want to say i have it that's right uh yeah 
Comments are getting weird. Okay, we're going to ignore for a couple minutes. (laughs) I'll have to... Mm -hmm. That's right, Skull. It's Lord Bunny Beer. (laughs) Lord Bunny Beer. There we go. There's your new Twitter handle. Uh, Lord Lord Bunny Bunny Beer. Beer. Lord Bunny Beer. Oh... So yeah, uh, if you want a new hard drive, uh, get on it. Well, wait, but I wonder if this will drive the price down of other hard drives. Well, uh, uh, probably it, not because those are enterprise editions. Uh, it always kind of does as uh, as the market kind of levels out, the new tech will come out and kind of push everything down. Yeah. And then hard drives do that a lot, whereas with graphics cards, it's just been, we're going to define a new tier somewhere right in here. Mm. Sorry, the prices aren't going to lower. Yeah. You wanted a... 2060 super oh sorry we're still gonna sell the 2060 yeah it's it's stuff like that um steve looks weird in this stream (laughs) that was a funny one that was a good one one. (laughs) oh props to that one oh that was steve (laughs) that was steve that said that oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) john john looks like budget fabio (laughs) <laughs> uh, before or after the bird? Uh, you know the nice part? So what do you think at the end? Still delicious. Still delicious, right? Still delicious. 4%. I could drink this. I could drink two of these and I'd be like, oh, I'm happy. I'm not right. drunk. Right. The one thing I was curious, in the I cut this out of the video though, I would love to have known the calorie count because a lot of things are trying to go like, Locale, that's what a lot of session beers are meant for. And I don't think they've advertised this at all. They did not. As a healthy beer. They did not. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, even in the 110 calorie range, it's still consi- I would consider that still a like pretty low calorie oh, beer. Oh, certainly. 130 or less. Yeah. So, I, so I, but that's kind of why I thought. Especially it, coming from someone who likes barrel aged stuff. Yeah. But I wonder if that's why they released it in January instead of the summer. Because of the dry January, or people are trying to get fit and yeah. drink, you know, lose calories. Could be. So, didn't know. It could be. Yeah. Uh, bite my bits. Nine ninety nine. Drink the Bud Lights in your fridge. Oh, my God. Really? That's a super chat. What's funny is he just gave me enough to go buy a six-pack of them. <laughs> You know what? For you, I will open the bottle. Because, yeah. All right. You want to do it? Let's do it. Why All not? Right. Uh, we don't even need to rinse our glasses because these will make them taste better. That's right. Wait, aren't there two? Yeah. Or are you just going to do one? There's two. Do you want the orange or do you want the lime? I'm more of a lime fan than an orange. Oh, wait. We got to make sure we're well, representing wait. here. Yeah, we don't even need those. There though, we huh? go. He doesn't even use glassware. Huh? That's right. Do you need a bottle of I, I got one. Right here on my keychain. <laughs> I was wondering how far you were going to go with the keg. I, <laughs> I couldn't get my... I, I knew what you were doing. like, stupid hook, come on! Uh, boop. <laughs> it smells like a boop. <laughs> It does smell like lime. Oh my. God, that smells horrible. Ooh, second smell, not so much. This is horrible. You drink this? Let me smell. Oh. Oh, good God. Oh. I want to. That's a little better. It's a little better. It's a. Lime is a less offensive flavor. This is. Uh. Oh. (laughs) Big, big spoon. What can blue do for you? Or what blue can do, we can do too. <laughs> there we go. I thought right. it was what can blue do for you. Blue can quench my taste buds after this is done. Here we go. You know, the lime is not nearly as bad as I was expecting. Now, my fridge is set like ice cold, so this is like 33 degrees. How do you drink that? I'm, I'm glad I got the lime. That's all I'm saying. This is... This is... There's a spicy note at the back end. Why is there a spicy note? <laughs> this is orange. Uh, so, by the way, this is actually a Bud Light Lime. I just wanted to clarify that. That we're not... 
We're not screwing with you. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give us one more shot. A big, a big, a big hearty gulp. Uh, wow, I'm gonna have to unsubscribe based on that. I might have to close the channel after this. This is horrible. It's like I took, um, what's, what's that? Speaking of the show going off the rails. <laughs> yeah. What, what, is, what is that orange soda um, that he kept drinking? Sunkiss? Sunkiss. Sun, this is like you took Bud Light and Sunkiss and just. Yeah. It, it's probably not that dissimilar. That's pretty much what that tastes Speaking like. Speaking of brewed with corn syrup. Yeah. So this pretty much represents the show you had at CES. Yeah. There you go. I'll, I'll try it. You want to try the lime? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I don't. I mean, at least lime. Lime is fine. I don't know. Artificial lime can taste pretty good. Ooh, nope. Don't oh, God. How do you like that? I'm not one to judge others' tastes, but I'm totally judging you right now. Like, seriously, how do you like that? Oh, my God. That's horrible. See, that's like all... the lime is at least palatable. I could, I could. This is all right. It's all right. This is all right. It's all right. Certainly not my favorite. This, this. <laughs> Adam says, "Don't talk shit about my sun kiss." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> this, this tastes like if I had a Bud Light and I wanted to put a lime in it, but I only had artificial lime flavor. Right. So this tastes weird. Yeah. This tastes like some backwoods concoction with Bud Light. Like yeah. a redneck Bud Light cocktail. I still don't know that I'm going to finish it because I have other good beer I want to get to. Yeah. But I opened it. I drank it on the channel. There, here's proof. Ugh. Not that it would be difficult to like uh, you know reseal this cap or anything. And just put it, fill it with water and yeah. be like, it still looks the same. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Fair is fair. I drink all you threw at me. There we go. All right. Yeah. He says fair is fair. All right. I'm going to put this over here. Ugh. Ugh. That's not good. Ah. No one's on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I don't care. Pick something. Ugh. Something to wash that out. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. That'll work. You just want to split it? Oh, we can split it. Yeah. Yeah. Work. I mean, I've already got enough carbonation in me from that. Yeah. Oh, God. Mm. Like, regular beer does not do that. <laughs> it warmed up like three degrees in the glass. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that's why he drinks it so fast. That is just awful. Okay. For the record, his his Bud Light Orange was not cold when he when we started the stream. Uh, so we had been at the hotel room for over 40 minutes uh, by the time we started the stream. And he got there, I think, 40 minutes before that. So it had not been refrigerated in quite a while. That's good. Good for uh, uh, Great Notion Juice Jr. Cheers on that. This is what a beer should look like. That's right. Look at that. Yeah. That's a beer. Ah, oh, that smells good. <laughs> Five dollars, uh, big big spoon. Dilly dilly, John, want to be friends? <laughs> mm. I thought we were friends. Oh, that's better. I feel better. See that? That's good citrus flavor. Yes. A little bit of. Uh, I get mango. Yeah. I get mango at the end. Yeah. Tangerine peel. Yeah. Something like that. Too. That that's actual orange. Yeah. Actual orange flavor. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, now that I've wasted like 15 minutes of your time, <laughs> uh, let's get on to one of the big stories of the day. We've got two. Uh, that is uh, NVIDIA will reportedly be launching RTX 3000 series cards in June of 2020. Uh, that is not an announcement. That is a launch date of June 2020. Uh and supposedly this is going to be their, their ampere based uh, seven nanometer chips. So the, I've had some speculation on this. I don't believe Turing was actually the true successor to Pascal. Okay. I don't believe the RTX chips 
were what was supposed to follow the Pascal based chips. I think Ampere was supposed to follow Pascal because those were the rumors that we had all the way up until around late March, early April last year, well before Computex, that Ampere was going to be coming and we had uh, a 1100 series on naming. And so we had the, the 1160, 1170, yeah. 1180, 1180 Ti. Um, and the rumor was that was going to be Ampere based. We talked about that on the show nine months ago. Yeah. Um, and all of a that. sudden, those rumors kind of went away and the 2000 number started coming in. And, and all of a sudden, oh, well, it's not going to be Ampere, it's going to be Turing. And it's like, oh, they're, they're like jumping one. No, I think what happened was Ampere was the true successor, but Ampere was always going to be a seven nanometer product. I believe Turing came in at the same FinFET level as Pascal, and they added tensor cores to it and called it innovation with, with ray tracing. Uh, and, and by all means did add more processing power with the ray tracing cores, but combined with their AI-based tensor cores, which had traditionally only been on their quadro cards. Um, and so they did give the consumer more, but at the same time, was it really what the consumer needed for gaming on or consumer cards? Promised. Probably not. Um, so it's been kind of a weird year, year and a half almost with NVIDIA. Um, but I believe Ampere will be kind of the next leap forward for NVIDIA in the graphics card race. Um, now all we have is that uh, the launch cards will likely be the 3080 and the 3070. The 3080 Ti. Um, uh, no 3080 Ti. Um, I don't. I don't think it has a TI anywhere in here. Oh, it's at some point. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, at yeah. At some, some point, thirty eighty TI is sure to appear, and I'm sure it will. Uh, but yeah, the the two that are rumored right now is, is the thirty eighty and the and the and the uh, the thirty seventy. Sorry. Um, no specs. No. No anything else. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, more is there to say on that? Not for, much. for some reason, the article goes talking about consoles, but the consoles are all going to be AMD based. So I'm not sure if they're trying to be, bring up like a competition level kind of thing. But... Yeah, and then they start doing guesstimate prices. Yeah. <laughs> are you comfortable paying this much or this much for this yeah. card? Yeah. Uh oh, Big Spoon got to return his 2070. <laughs> 2070, I think, is still going to be a good card, um, regardless of what comes out. I mean, it's a mid tier. I mean, God, it's a $500 card right now. Yeah. Uh, four fifty at at minimum. Uh, yeah. What can't you play? What can't you play? What can't you play at over a hundred and twenty at full settings yeah. at fourteen forty? Like, <laughs> I've been arguing this for years. Graphics technology has far exceeded software technology. Um, un unless you're a competitive gamer, the, I I don't see many other arguments or avenues to that. Uh, especially when most of my graphics testing is like, yeah, let's test Doom at 4K ultra settings. Oh, look, we hit 180 FPS. <laughs> I'm playing a first-person single-player shooter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? See that? There was no no striping. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much better. That extra $500, totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to have to rag on you here. It's not pronounced Ampere. It's pronounced Ampere. Well, whatever. Until NVIDIA officially gives it a name, I'm just going to call it Ampere, because that's what I've been calling it <laughs> since I first started uh, talking about it, I don't know, nine months ago? Yeah. So, I'm digging in, digging in my heels, mainly because this one doesn't bend right now. I'm sorry, I'm just full of dad jokes tonight. <laughs> it's all I've got left. Um, yeah, I... I have a spot? N NVIDIA to 7 nanometer... What's that? You have a spot? Oh, I think... No, the microphone. I, it's microphone no, shadow. You think it's in the microphone? Lean over that way. Right there. Oh, look at that. That's why I had to get up and move the light right before we went live. Uh, normally, I have two lights going. I actually moved my office around this oh, last week. Now it looks like Jeff um, beats me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you forget it, buddy man. <laughs> Uh, so I actually changed the way my office looks. John, do you like the look of the office? I do. I think actually this works better than how you originally, than how we originally said it. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, the flow of the room works better. Um, my office is 99, uh, 92 
We'll call it 92. 92% complete. I still have some drywall work to do around the door, some framing. Uh, this wall needs to be converted over to wood because um, I don't like the, the gray finish on camera. Um, but uh, my editing area is ready. I have yep. a testing, I, I have a test bench. Oh, you see that? Look at that. Yeah. Uh, my monitor is hung. My TV is hung. I have a couch. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like it's a cool room. It's legit a cool room. Uh, yeah, he has a couch to sit and play games while he's playing a switch while he's letting the test bench run. Yeah, uh, I actually reversed the whole room because of the couch. I wanted the couch in here. Yeah. So, and I think it works. That and it's just one more thing that provides a little bit of echo reduction and uh, doesn't isn't just like foam panels thrown on the wall. And it's actually functional because now I can sit here and I can oh, yeah. watch then, football yeah. or and do then, whatever. You know, if we ever yeah. have a third guest or whatever for something. Yep. sit there and, or whoever knows whatever oh you gotta watch we have enough here yep. never mind I'll shut up now yep yeah the audio was bad at the start of the stream apologies for that uh, as I said I traveled with my mixer and I didn't bother checking settings beforehand that's my bad streamer 101 <laughs> uh, but uh, I had like an auto tune setting on on my mixer as well as my bass turned like three quarters of the way yeah. down <clears throat> and the treble cranked all the way up yeah <laughs> Uh, some people is asking if they can turn the camera around. You know what though? If you join Jeff's Patreon channel, you do get snapshots and yep. cool snippets of uh, behind the scenes stuff of talking heads right. and craft computing and chatting with all of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there Zoom you go. In. There you go. There you go. Uh, so there's my couch over there on the side. Way, way better than holding a mirror, don't you think? <laughs> so, so I've got a couch. Um, I've got my full desk set up. I've got uh, my same cabinet set up. But instead of being a liquor cabinet this time around, it's actually a... Uh, a like cards? Uh, no, oh. it's uh, camera gear, lighting. Uh, it's a battery charging station. So it's actually like a functional cabinet. Because cabinet, all my liquor's over here. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's legit a cool room. I'll, I will be giving a studio tour within the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll be shooting a quick video. At 100%. Right. right. Uh, I just need to finish the drywall. Because that's not done yet. Yeah. And it bugs me. Oh, you got to hang up your plaque. You're going to hang it up back here or you're going to hang it up over there? I think I'm going to hang it over there. I like it over my editing desk. Okay. I think it looks better. Uh, see those down there? Don't mention what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, those are going to go back here for different things to be sat on. Mm. Like product shelves. Mm. Yeah. Aren't those going to look good? Yeah. Really yeah. Good. You get a little contrast to the back wall. Mm -hmm. That should be cool. You don't know what we're talking about. With uh, removable shelves, so you can still use them for their original oh. purpose, too. <laughs> so I can, like, swap in yeah. item A or item B. So, it, yeah, <laughs> zoom in really close to Jeff's phone. <laughs> Rewind this. That's right. All right, moving right along. Uh, so one of the things that was uh, shown off at CES this last week, but uh, didn't get any press hardly at all. Was it at CES? No, they just announced no, it. No, it was just announced. They just announced it. Um is was uh there's a uk based company that builds laptops called expanscape um <laughs> which is two of the weirdest words i've ever seen put together um <laughs> but leave it to the sec tech sector to go let's just take these two words and make one word with them i need a clock and a shoe there you go schlock <laughs> shoe clock <laughs> yeah better than the other better than the alternative <laughs> <laughs> Dad jokes. Dad jokes all day. Stop setting them up. <laughs> That's my whole reason for being here. <laughs> it's true. Uh, you set them up, I'll knock them down. All right. Uh, so Expanscape. Uh, everyone likes nice laptop screens, especially with a lot of screen real estate. That's one of my, my main things that I look for on laptops is screen real estate. Uh, portability is usually number one, but number two is a high res screen so I can actually do work on it and spread yeah. stuff out and not just be single task focused. Even 1080p I, I find is a little constraining at oh, yeah. times. Um, well, you ever carry a portable monitor with you, John? Like, like, uh, a, like a second screen? A second screen, yeah, I, mean, I have one. Okay, you ever carry two of them? You ever, you ever set your iPad up as like a third screen? Just kind of like kick it off there, you know, kind of do the... No. How about seven? <laughs> seven screen foldable laptop. <laughs> yes, please. I would take that. <laughs> I would take that. 
called the Aurora 7. It is fitted with a desktop grade i9 9900K <laughs> and GTX uh, NVIDIA graphics. So I'm assuming something like a 1660 Ti because uh, they, they don't say RTX graphics. There we go. Um, but this thing is ridiculous. It has four 17 inch 4K panels and three 7 inch 1920 by 1200 panels. Yeah, one's even built into the keyboard. Right. <laughs> and what's funny is in the first picture, I didn't even see it. It's just kind of. I thought that was a sticker. I know. I know. I was trying to figure out like where's the, I, it says. I seven, see I, six. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait. Oh, there. Yeah. That's. A, I thought that was a sticker. Yeah. Uh, so if anyone has seen like the Pimp My Ride van that's been making the rounds on the tech YouTubers, mm -hmm. uh, Tavarish uh, bought it and then rebuilt it and then gave it to Hoovy and then he gave it to the Midwest Dream Car Collection. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's kind of like made the rounds through the yeah. tech YouTuber or the car YouTuber community. Um, this laptop reminds me of the collapsible LCD screens in that van. Because <laughs> you hit a button and it's like, shink, shink, shink. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Um, yeah, it looks ridiculous. Uh, so, yeah, you have, you have the four, obviously, 17.4-inch 4K displays right up front. Um, this thing is just mind-boggling. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, you can see, and then there's a phone. Probably looks like an S10 right next to it. I do love the stereo speakers on either yeah, side. Yeah, the, the bottom point. Those are probably the best speakers to ever be integrated into a laptop. God, look how thick that thing is, too. I know. Well, have you tried cooling a 9900K? Yeah, I, my lord. I did, so what? Let me let me ask, though, so the power supply. Is that like the battery lasts like minutes? <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably something like that I, I can imagine it's got like dual power bricks like this yeah <laughs> epos knows what i'm talking about um but you know that this thing is just insane um i don't even know why we're talking about it oh uh, oh and by the way they also have the teeny serve duo oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah i forgot about that the teeny serve duo with two of those <laughs> Uh, and I love how they say it's slightly less crazy. <laughs> uh, so I, this, thought, I thought that was just the laptop folded up. Right. So, no, this is going to be a 7-inch dual screen, 1920 by 1200 uh, display with an i7 quad core, assuming one of their 12-volt uh, uh, super low uh, wattage chips, 64 gigs of RAM, and an NVMe solid state. How in the world do you need 64 gigs of RAM on a, on a handheld? On what is obviously a 3D printed uh, enclosure, yeah, with uh, with what looks like a twenty dollar RF or uh, uh, yeah RF keyboard. I, I've actually used that exact same keyboard. I have like four of those. I used to use them for Raspberry Pis. <laughs> <laughs> Pokedex. <laughs> Someone says very clearly for the singular purpose of oh, stock right. trading, and you might not be wrong. Yeah, but some but they've got like Nmap running on here. And, and some weird terminal stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. just weird. I don't know who the who the market is for this. I honestly don't. Did you see this at CES? No. Oh, okay. Uh, it turns out the prototype are not at yeah. CES. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They just announced it the same week. Ah. So, yeah. Uh, I will send out an inquiry for a review unit <laughs> if anyone wants to uh, to see it. Let me let me know in the comments, not in the chat, but in the comments if you want to see that thing, because uh, I kind of do. Oh yeah. I want to see how that thing even folds and how thick it is. Probably as thick as the old original laptops. Yeah. Honey, put your laptop away. It's center time. Okay, here. Thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> I want it. I want to do it. I want it to have like you know when Windows turns off. I want it to have the Transformers morphing. Sound. <laughs> 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 I'd use it to emulate everything all at once. Uh, a very portable Minecraft server. Looks like a dual monitor Blackberry. <laughs> I don't think any of you are wrong. Uh, anyway, moving right along. Uh, oh, it's 9 o'clock. We're actually doing pretty good. Yeah, even for the ranting. Yep. Did we drop... Did we drop? No, YouTube does that sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they, like... they do weird things. Yeah. They're actually doing all right viewership-wise. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Did you skip an article? Or did you I skip an moved article? one. Oh, I moved one. Ah, that's right. Because I had two NVIDIA articles right next to each mm -hmm. other. 
Uh, so we talked about that this during CES week. It only got like a 20 or 30 second blurb during one of my videos because, well, there's a lot of information to cover. Uh, one of the things that uh, that was kind of under the radar, in my opinion, uh, EVGA announced uh, the RTX 2060 KO. Uh, they are resurrecting the KO lineup from their budget enthusiast line of cards all the way back in the 8800 GTS days. Um, it is not a monkey that they have used really since then. Um, but uh, this is a standard 2060, not a 2060 Super. No. Uh, now, a standard 2060 is still going to run you $349, $359 today. Uh, this comes in at $299, and in fact, over the weekend, was seen on Amazon and Newegg both for $279. Uh, so literally, like, if this all pans out, like an $80 price drop on an RTX 2060. Now, it does have a couple of stripped down features, namely the outputs. Uh, there's only three outputs on this. Yeah. Um, it has a, a, a standard DVI port, a display port, and an HDMI. Yeah. And so multi-monitor enthusiasts need not apply. But if you're looking for a reasonable... I mean, if you have a bunch of crappy monitor, like if, if you frame sure. your monitor, sure, sure. then yeah, right. all you want. Taking me back to my 9800 GTX days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back when I had a, a, a dual DVI and then a DVI to VGA on the on the second card. Hey, I still have to do that sometimes at work. Yeah. Like, oh, you want multiple monitors. Okay, yep. here you go. Um, it's actually hold right there. <laughs> Jeff saw, well, just check out my workstation that I do. Oh, you just happen to have one. So, I actually happen to have one. <laughs> uh, so if you're interested in seeing like what the differences are, you can obviously see a little oh, bit of yeah. uh, the interface differences there. Uh, I will have a video coming out hopefully in like a day or two. Um, I just got this in today. Um, but uh, yeah, video coming soon on the RTX 2060 KO on whether or not it's a good buy. How does it stack up against the... Uh, oh, I thought it? that was raindrops. Yeah, no, that's... Uh, Their logo. Yeah, it's the EVGA logo yeah. on top of the blades. Yeah, they're yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to be comparing this against uh, EVGA's previous 26, uh, 20, 2060, uh, uh, their XC, uh, which is their same dual fan design, although it's a much longer card. Uh, we'll see what the differences are. Did they shave anything off except the I.O.? Um, how does it perform? That kind of thing. And uh, can you save yourself 80 bucks and get still get RTX? So stay tuned for that video. And this might be the follow-up to that. All right. So. But yeah, this is kind of a, a response to the 5600 XT launch, uh, somewhere right in the same price point. Like I said, 249, 269. Uh, AMD didn't really even have the, the 5600 XT to show off. Um, like we we walked through their suite and all of their builds and demos had 5700 XTs in them. It's like okay, so you paper launched the card. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's not exciting. That's not it fun. Does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Just see if there's anything on there. Yep. Uh, no, they're still talking about the laptop. Or that was a while ago. I'd like to see the PCB on that card. I will likely be tearing apart the PCB because I'm kind of curious myself. Um, if it's a reference board design, I'll, I'll be referencing uh, pictures of that. But uh, I do want to look at you know one of EVGA's own cards and kind of compare and contrast. Is it worth the $80 savings? Yeah. Um, my initial gut feeling is probably yes, but stay tuned to the review. Old DVX, VGA, man. Yeah. I still rock the VGA. <laughs> it's because you're weird. <laughs> Uh, Panasonic. Uh, I was hoping to see this on the show floor at CES. I never got to see it. Um, I will be trying to get a hold of one of these for a review, whether I have to buy it myself or beg, borrow, and steal one from Panasonic. Oh, these exactly. look cool. They look cool. They look cool. This is what I want VR to be. This, I mean, this looks like, so we're talking about the new Panasonic VR, uh, yeah. Ultra HD VR eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. These things look sweet. Uh, they look like welder glasses. Yeah. Um, they're supposed to be ultra, ultra lightweight, uh, high resolution uh, screens, um, but not a whole, I, they didn't say a whole lot of specs on the actual hardware. Right. Although it is UHD, so it is a 4K capable. Yeah. Whether or not that's 4K total resolution, 4,000 total pixels, uh, you have a horizontal or vertical resolution of 2160, so they're counting it. 
Yeah. I don't know. Because uh, VR is kind of the wild, wild west for specs. Look no further than Pimax to go, we have 8K VR. No, you have two 4K screens. That's quarter or that's half 8K VR. Yeah. Um, you know, so things like that. Um, but no, uh, the press photos for this and actually uh, photos of people trying it from the CES show floor. It looks comfortable. It's lightweight. Yeah. Um, that was the other thing I forgot to say. Was like they, they're yeah. saying it was super lightweight. Steampunk out those bad boys. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just the design alone looks yep. sick. Although I do wonder where I didn't get to see uh, power. How does power look? Uh, there's a single cable coming in the back, I believe. Okay. Um, so uh, this is not a standalone product. This is a PC connected product. Uh, it will be equipped with, with micro OLED panels uh, developed uh, in cooperation by uh, Copen Corporation and Panasonic. Um, does have integrated headphones, obviously. Uh, and yeah, they exhibited the, the VR glasses as a reference product at the booth. Uh, so whether or not this will actually make it to, out to a retail product or if they were just saying this is our reference uh, version of VR, you can license this technology and, and another company has to actually develop actually, it. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, but I want them. I want them so bad. Yeah, those look sick. Those yep. look cool. Yep. Yeah, Pico VR is the other company that I'm looking at. They had a super lightweight set. Really? Um, that looked insanely comfortable. <clears throat> Although I do wonder how, how tight this is, if there would be a back strap or something to keep your head from, you know, when you look down or anything. Yeah. I mean, this does look more of, if this is the final product, like you were saying, might be licensed, I bet there will probably need to be a strap at the back. Yeah. Or some some mechanism of holding it closer to your head because either that's going to be way too tight and I look down or I do a quick move it and they'll fly right off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, there, there's got to be some kind of strap, some yeah. kind of thing to hold it on. Well, that's and just those arms that look so thin. That's why I was wondering where's the power supply coming from. Uh, also, Pico VR uh, had a VR display that was uh, USB-C only, designed for smartphones. So they're trying to re-enter the the smartphone mm. VR market. Um, and actually, I'm looking at something like that simply for like an airline carry-on. So instead of carrying like a nice set of headphones with me, carry like a VR display and watch a movie in front of me. Now, see, that's a that I you know, always, mobile theater kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, mobile theater type of a thing that get that you have a 100-inch screen in front of your face. But and if it's even 1080p, mm -hmm. that's going to look fine to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just lower If I can lower the screen size, to be like 80 inches. Right. You know, whatever. You totally. Know, like, oh, yeah, that'll look nice, crisp, clean, clear. And even if I do get a little VR, if that is a bit higher resolution, I wonder if they could bump up the uh, uh, speed yep. to make so I wouldn't be sick. Yep. Uh, so this next story was a little bit of an interesting one. Um, so I had the pleasure of sitting and talking with uh, Dr. Ian Cutris of, uh, of an Antec for the better part of an hour. Uh, so we were in one of the, the hotel suites um, and uh, he walked into the room, walked over, introduced himself to Epos Vox. We, he got to chatting with him, and then I introduced myself, and, and he, he knew both of our channels, which I was, like, ecstatic to hear. And then he's all like, um, you, you, you told him about me, right? Oh, oh, he, oh yeah, yeah. He knew he, about me? He, he, knew, he knew his lordship. That's right, and he did. Dr. Yeah. Ian Cutris certainly knew about uh, Lord Hops and Brews. That's right, he did. That's right. <laughs> um... But uh, anyway, one of the things that he talked about was he's writing an article right now about, uh, did you ever hear what happened to uh, AMD's TRX80, WRX80 chipsets? Um, and I said, no, because if you remember right, up until the launch of Threadripper Gen 3 um, with the, the Zen 2 architecture, seven nanometer, uh, so your, your 3960 and your 3970, um, there was rumors that there was going to be a TRX40 for a four-channel memory Threadripper consumer slot mm -hmm. socket. There was also going to be a TRX88 channel memory socket available for higher-end SKUs, um, which would be backwards compatible or lower tier compatible with TRX40 chips. So if you had like a 24-core uh, with four-channel memory CPU, you could slide it into an eight channel board, but only have four channels of memory access. So it was gonna be tiered off something like that. Whereas like the 64 core would have eight channels of memory to work with. Yep. Um, there was also going to be a WRX80 uh, chipset, which was a workstation variant of the chipset. 
Uh, so you can take a 64 core Threadripper, drop it into a workstation board, get full ECC registered support, and get a whole bunch of other you know, workstation class features, more NVMe support, integrated NVMe RAID, et cetera, et cetera. Um, according to, I guess, multiple prominent sources, neither of those chipsets ever existed. On the drawing board, on the table, in press releases, in anything. Well, I mean, they had to be on at least press releases. Well, it, WCCF Tech and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and sites like that, uh, Tech Radar, Reddit, you know, I'm sure it, it was all making the rounds. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, so Ian claims that uh, TRX 80 <laughs> literally was never a thought in AMD's mind. Uh, and so we got talking about uh, basically. Um, Threadripper versus Epic. And, and I expressed a little bit of my disappointment, especially given my channel basis. I'm a little bit disappointed that Threadripper and Epic don't actually just share an architecture, don't just share a yep. chipset. Um, because that's that's been one of Intel's hallmarks for a lot of their chipsets, has been their server grade stuff literally can just slot into their consumer grade stuff for the most part. Uh, when you're when you're on the enthusiast chip, so an X99 board is the same as a C604 motherboard. Um, your X79 is the same as a C602, um, and so you can take a Xeon chip, put it in an X79. You Swap can take an X79, yep. put it in a C602. It it doesn't matter. Um, now whether or not you get full ECC support, does the board support it? Does it support that level of process? That's that's all up to the motherboard, but. Um, the, the point is the, the CPUs themselves were, were socketable. Uh, now, there is no difference between an SP4 and a TR3 uh, socket uh, as, as far as like the number of pins and the layout and everything else. What's different is how they pinned them on the board itself, and they are pinned differently between the Epic CPUs and the Threadripper CPUs, which means while you might be able to slot a, a, a Threadripper chip into a, an Epic board, it doesn't actually work. Yeah, it won't uh, they're they're pinned differently, and so it, it won't post, it won't boot, it won't recognize it, it won't do anything. Um, and I I express a little bit of disappointment, going well that means there's never going to be like cheap Epic CPUs flooding the market that I can slot into like a budget TRX forty motherboard, and all of a sudden I've got thirty two cores at two gigahertz that I picked up for like four hundred dollars. You know the the level of deal that I found on some of the higher end Xeons yeah. of the day. You know, remember I started my channel based on an X seventy nine Xeon six core CPU, and then at that uh, a couple of months before that, I had built uh, a twelve core Xeon workstation, and I paid three hundred eighty five dollars for a, a twelve core Xeon Intel Confidential chip on eBay <laughs> from that. a Chinese seller. You were like really proud of that chip too. <laughs> I was really proud of that chip. <laughs> you see that thing render video? Holy crap! Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Eight channel memory isn't quite in the cusp of like the consumer range yet. It's close. Uh, you can always buy an Epic board. Yeah. You can buy an Epic Gen two board, get eight channel memory, and uh, and off you go. But uh, but yeah, apparently those were never actually things. Now, likewise, Intel was rumored to be uh, changing up the <coughs> uh, the socket for their upcoming Ice Lake. Uh, 10 nanometer desktop chips. Um, they were rumored to be switching over to the 1159 or LGA 1159, also uh, potentially also LGA 1200, just depending on how many pins Intel decided yeah. they needed for power delivery this time around. Uh, apparently, that has been completely debunked as well. 1159 never existed either on Intel's roadmap. <laughs> um, so where these rumors came from... <coughs> We're actually still not, still not sure. Uh, quoting the article, all of our primary sources in this regard had very puzzled looks on, our, on their faces when I mentioned either the TRX-80, WRX-80, or LGA-1159. One of them looked at me in amazement, specifically said, what are you on about? I explained the situation uh, with the internet talking about new 8-channel consumer motherboards or an updated socket to Intel's Comet Lake and beyond. Sorry, Comet Lake, not Ice Lake. Intel has too many lakes. Uh, the answer I got was very clear cut from everyone I talked to. Nowhere on the roadmaps has it ever said TRX-80, WX-80, or LGA-1159. 
Um, now, obviously, none of the companies that he talked to want to speak <laughs> publicly about that. Uh, but multiple, multiple high profile uh, uh, players in all of these companies. So we're talking beyond PR reps, possibly PR reps, but also speaking to like board engineers yeah. and, and whatnot. P people higher up than probably even I have access to. Yeah. Um, saying those literally are not things. <laughs> We never even talked about that budget. It wasn't even in a meeting. Don't know where you're getting that from. Right. So, yeah. An angry it, employee wrote that on Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> it all came, it came from where all rumors come from. Russian bots. Yeah, I told you to shut that botnet down, Steve. <laughs> Jeez. Where are the blue glasses on bunny, on bunny beers? Um, well, they're, they're all the way out in my garage. Yeah. I know where they're at. And did you not see his cast? <sighs> yeah. He's, he's got to walk up a flight of stairs. Yeah. Then down some to get to the garage. <laughs> yeah. Find it. Come back. It's a split level it. house yeah. with the garage kind of halfway in between. So I have to walk <laughs> all the way up. Uh, uh, one flight, a landing, another flight. Go across the there, down another flight, and then down into the garage. Yeah, it's not all that pleasant. <laughs> And then you're going to be stuck with me just on the stream. Right. We've done that before. Nothing ever, nothing good ever comes. Yeah, he all of a sudden just flatlines on views. It's just like, oh. <laughs> um, Funny though, is my viewership on my channel, my subs go up. That's right. <laughs> uh, that Russian bot was a nice lady. <laughs> uh, all right. Moving right along, a little bit more to get to here. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is actually a little bit of a local story for Pretty us. Yeah. Um, so uh, Senator Ron Wyden, he's an uh, Oregon senator. Um, and uh, he is asking the FTC to start looking into claims of ad block applications, service providers, Chrome extensions, etc. So things like uBlock, AdBlock Plus, yeah. um, etc. Uh, start looking into claims that the product they are selling consumers is not genuine. And what he means by that is ad blockers are supposedly, and have been for a while, uh, have been whitelisting ad hosts and letting ads through depending on who pays them more. <laughs> um, so essentially the product that they're selling consumers, whether it's free or through whatever revenue streams ad block, whatever white block potent yeah. ha potentially has, um, has been, we block all ads. And then somewhere in the fine print, it's been except those who have paid us money to promote only their ads, or in some cases replace other providers with theirs, with, with our own injected ads. Um, and this is actually kind of a big deal. Uh, mainly because that goes against a lot of antitrust uh, legislation. It goes against some consumer protection uh, legislation that's out there. Yeah. Um, there, there's numerous no-nos <laughs> being committed by a number of ad blockers. Um, oh, I didn't see the update. Hold on. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that was yesterday. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't. I hadn't seen that today. Um, uh, update. IO told Engadget it had been clear on how acceptable ads worked, uh, having been fully briefed, having fully briefed the FTC in 2016 and had been 100% transparent with users. It fully argued that acceptable ads had expanded to, quote, an open and transparent ecosystem with independent oversight. Um, so basically, the ad uh, blockers are claiming that they are being transparent with users and saying we only allow ads through that are non-invasive, non, uh, you know, non-destructive, non-malware, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that pays the most. And back off. Yeah. So that's that's <clears throat> their response. Uh, but this could mean trouble for for a lot of different ad block providers. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't think this is going to interfere with anything like Pi-hole because Pi-hole is a is a user generated uh, list yeah. that it uh, downloads from their own repository. 
Uh, same with a lot of other, other ad blockers. There's a number of different ad block lists you can get. I know PF Sense, you can do PF Block um, and, and get a DNS based ad block list on that. Um, yeah. So, interesting, interesting development. We're still very early. Yeah, and I wonder if anything does happen or come about of it. Um, yeah. Or if it's just one of those. Yeah, I file an injunction. Yeah. That's it. Because, yeah, pretty much the only thing that's been done so far is basically like a letter of inquiry yeah. uh, from the center to uh, the FTC. And the FTC can act on it or not. They're they're not bound to be required to act on it. Don't know. Yeah. Little gaming news. Little gaming news. Got a little, little gaming, gaming news. news. Yeah. You gonna go to E3 this year? Uh, I have not been. I don't think I'm going to go. I think we're gonna go back to PAX West this year. PAX West. Oh, I'd, uh, I'd love to. PAX West. It's a little bit closer. It's a little bit cheaper. Yep. And um, not as crowded. Yeah. Well, it's probably still as crowded, but. Uh, it actually wasn't too bad when we were there. No, it wasn't too um, bad. But... That and I've got a little bit more show coverage under my belt. Um, I'm having done two CESs solo now. Yeah. Uh, so PAX West was the first show that I tried to cover as like an independent person. And I brought the whole crew along. Possibly a mistake on my part. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, PAX West is a show that I'm trying to make like my home convention. Like, Well, I if mean... You, if also, I go to something, I probably need to go to PAX West. It, it was kind of one of those things like... It's so close. I can bring the whole crew. <laughs> right. I can bring the whole crew. We can drive up there in a truck. Yeah. We can rent one hotel room, which we we actually rented a really nice suite. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It, it was yep. basically like a two-story apartment. That, we that was... Had this weird spiral... Had a spiral staircase in the middle of it. It was wonderful. <laughs> we absolutely should have done a live stream or something from there. But uh, I have a little bit more live event coverage under my belt now. I know what I'm doing a little bit better. I have better equipment for it. Oh god! Though that that uh that rig you brought to that one, although that did get us in places. It did. It was. This... There's something to be said for having a shoulder mount rig. Yeah, he had this big old two-handed shoulder mount rig that looked like a big machine gun. It with was... a with a Sony A6000 and a Canon 24 to to 105 L. Yeah. Uh, it... and and like this NPF battery that sat on the back of it. Um. And, and a seven inch monitor, so you've got like this dual handled thing with like a seven inch screen right in your face. Yeah. It looked intimidating. It did. It really looked like, oh, these guys know what they're doing. What's really fun is uh, is uh, walking through CES, especially when it gets crowded on the showroom floor. Um, so uh, usually I carry the camera like right down here, like, like low and tight. Um, if you're trying to get through somewhere, literally hold the camera up in front of you oh, yeah. and just push through the crowd and they will part. Yeah. And the same thing worked with that shoulder rig. Oh, it did. Yeah, you did that. Yeah. People were like, oh, 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 hang on. That, that guy's serious. He's a big channel. Mm -hmm. Get out of the way. And you weren't even at 100 then. Uh, no, I was uh, low 80s, high 70s. Yeah. So it was, it yeah. was, <laughs> but it was pretty fun. A lot of people commented, but it was heavy. Yeah. <laughs> like even midway, you're like, Oh, my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, no, we had to take turns carrying that thing because it was ungodly heavy. Yeah. Um, yeah, lessons learned from that. That was kind of my test rig for CES, and as soon as we got back, I scrapped the whole thing. <laughs> that was horrible. Never again. Never again to carry something that large. Uh, so basically, I shrunk down that rig into the rig. Uh, I posted a video last December of, uh, of like what's in my camera bag and what am I taking to CES. Yeah. And that was my Sony A6000 rig that I put together. And that was a really, really nice rig. And I think at the time uh, I said, I don't see the need to like upgrade to 4K because I don't see the workflow and what's the benefit. And then two months later, I bought a 4K camera. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then six months later, I bought a cinema camera. Well, uh, and then, yeah, if you want to see that setup, you can go, uh, was it Jared's? Uh, no, Epos Vox. Epo, yeah, Epos Vox. Epos Vox had, yeah. a, had a video yep. about your setup. Uh, so, what's, so. In, what's in my mobile streaming bag and my Zcam E2 tour. Yeah. So uh, go, go which, which I will be doing my own tour video here probably later this month. Uh, kind of an intro to the new studio as well. Which was still uh, you, because all they did was just turn the camera to you and you yeah. took over. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I have a little bit more to talk about about like lens selection and what what I use here in the studio because yeah. that, that was very much my travel rig. So, uh, but E three uh, two thousand and nineteen and two thousand and twenty, Sony will not be there this year mm -hmm. again. Uh, so it's kind two, of two in a row. Two in a row, kind of an interesting thing, especially with the announcement of PS five. Mm -hmm. um, so you would, Sony's usually been a pretty big player. In the E3, like the early ages of E3, there was always the big Sony booth and usually a lot of big announcements. They're not going to be there this year. Mm -hmm. um, again. So, just 
kind of interesting news. No reason why they said they would rather spend more time doing their own personal events throughout the year, essentially, which kind of makes it sound, or, or other events, they said other events. Right. Which makes it sound like they're going to do probably their own personal event for probably the yeah. PS5. Yep. Uh, Sony skipped the show saying it wanted to, quote, think differently, mm -hmm. which is a very Apple way to put it. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Remember their slogan throughout the 90s was think different. <laughs> uh, and all of a sudden Apple started holding all their own events with Blackjack and Hookers. I mean, without <laughs> the Blackjack and Hookers. Um, yeah. Uh, so, interesting move. I, I don't like the move of holding 100 different events. I'd rather have one event with 100 different vendors. Yeah. Um, and you're more than welcome to hold your own press conference. Like, you want to announce the PS5? Cool. But join the other kids in the sandbox when you announce all the games for it. Yeah. Or, you know, if, uh, it's just weird. It, it's just weird. I don't know. It kind of comes off as a, a little slap in the face to fans, too. Mm -hmm. and, and consumers. Of They go to E3. They go to these big consumer events mm -hmm. for the big name brands. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when one's not even going to be there, I mean, that's literally like going to Comic-Con and Marvel not showing up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's a weird one. Uh, so, Sony, I wish to see you back at E3 at some point. But uh, if not, you're lost, I guess. Yeah. So. Uh, so, I almost want to turn off chat because I still have not watched The Mandalorian. <laughs> if you spoil it for me, you will be banned. Are we clear? Okay. Uh, so, uh, I am aware of the Baby Yoda phenomenon yes. that has taken Disney Plus subscribers by storm. And the meme world by storm. And the meme world by storm. Uh, I, I have taken part in a couple of Baby Yoda meme wars. And even though you have no idea what's going on. No idea. In context, nothing. He was like, ah, that's funny. Right. I assume so. Here's a screen grab that I can... Probably just... Turn into something humorous. Yep. Let's, let's go at it. Um... So, uh, I don't think I have... Did I take a picture of it? I don't know if I ever did. Um, so, a number of years ago, I uh, made myself a Christmas wreath out of uh, RAM. Oh, yes. I yeah. remember, I remember uh, you talking about One of the this. first Reddit posts that I had ever seen someone do that with, I went, that's genius, and I had a whole stockpile of RAM, and so I just did it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I've been hanging this up for probably like six or seven years, at least. Um, let's see if I... Took a picture before I left. Pretty sure I did. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, sorry about that one. Yeah. Uh, nope, I don't see it. Darn. Um, anyway, so uh, so I have this Christmas wreath made out of uh, memory. Well, uh, my networking guy just got a 3D printer, and he 3D printed a uh, baby Yoda to sit as like an angel on top oh, of Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, so I, I have a, a red bow that's a, a Cat 6 cable mm -hmm. tied at the top of it, and then and then we have a baby Yoda who sits like, <laughs> has the uh, the angel on the wreath now. It's pretty awesome. So i well aware of the phenomenon. Yeah. Um, never really been interested in having any like baby Yoda swag until this one. Until this one. Until, until, this until one. you could technically build your own baby yoda that's right uh build a bear has announced that uh they are introducing baby yoda as a buildable bear in their workshops <laughs> i i want one yep. i want one so bad i only want one if they have a mandalorian helmet that i can put on top of it <laughs> totally <laughs> uh, i thought you had an essential phone i tr uh Started to have my main issue with the essential phone was always the rear camera. It was never up to snuff that I thought it should be. Everything else about the phone is wonderful, um, but I ended up uh, buying a, uh, a Pixel 3a just because I needed a better camera. Um, had to have one. I have two young daughters, uh, plus trying to do like these show show things, plus moving into a new house or even shopping for a new house, and it's like, oh, we need to take pictures of like every room so yeah. we remember what it's like. This camera actually takes pictures, whereas the essential one... Uh, it was like an old flip phone camera. It wasn't that bad, <laughs> but uh, the ISO performance was terrible. It was horribly noisy. It wasn't sharp. The autofocus mm -hmm. was garbage. Uh, uh, and everything came out motion blurred because the ISO performance was garbage. Yeah. So it was like... It was terrible, especially if there's any motion in the frame at all, which 
I have two young daughters. There is no such thing as not motion. Look at the blur. Yeah. So every picture of my daughter for like the last year has been like, <laughs> yeah, it's been been great. Uh, I've seen the Baby Yoda cocktails popping up now. Yeah, uh, who was that? Uh, not educated barfly. Uh, oh, uh, cocktail chemistry. Cocktail, yeah, yeah. Put he, put he, out a, a Baby Yoda problem. cocktail. Yeah, you might see that on on a show eventually. Yeah, I think we're gonna have watch to do that the Mandalorian one. first. Yeah. That's a good show. Tipsy bartender just did one. His drinks are a lot of sugar though. Like I, I like Tipsy bartender. I think he's fun to watch, but uh, his drinks are usually like more like frat drink oriented yeah if, if i say so myself yeah tipsy is um i mean he even did like his version of beer cocktail is mm. hey here's a beer dump it in a margarita right there you go beer cocktail beer cocktail <laughs> no no <laughs> yeah so <laughs> beer cocktail i put a salt rim around my bud light orange beer cocktail still a bud light orange <laughs> All right, I tossed this one in. I'm not sure if you read it. Uh, I did not get a chance okay. to read this one. Uh, so this one was funny. Uh, it's not at all tech-related, but we're in the later part of the show, so I don't care. Well, we uh, got time. We're good. We got time, yeah. I'm actually surprised we're doing this well for time. No, uh, it went, it flowed. And how many breaks we've had. It's, it's 9.30. We're doing well. Um, yeah, what are you guys drinking? Uh, Great Notion Juice Jr. Yeah. Right there. Uh, so, uh, there we go. <laughs> I want to make sure to timestamp it. Uh, so we all know that the Corvette manufacturing plant is in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, now we all know also there's a new Corvette that has been kind of making the, the rounds. The the new C8 was unveiled, uh, what was that, three, four months ago? Something like that, yeah. Uh, rear engine, uh, a, a new version of the LS engine. Uh, Very super car. Making something like 560 brake horsepower yeah. on like the stock model. That's not even like the Z06. Yeah. Um, $60,000, also available in a convertible for 75. Um, like insane value, truly a supercar. Um, it, it's a it's supposed to be kind of like a European car killer. Yeah, th this is like an Italian killer. Yeah, th this is this is your 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 Lambo, your your, uh, yeah. your Ferrari, Ferraris, your Porsches. Yeah, th this is this. your Italian killer. Yeah, uh, sixty thousand dollars for looks, this level and of refinement. Even line. looks it too. It, it looks like like one of those. Uh, way more carbon fiber than any American car has really ever been. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful looking car. Well, uh, some GM engineers, some GM employees happen to be out, let's just say testing the cars, putting them through their paces. Uh, yeah, right. Both were arrested <laughs> in Bowling Green, Kentucky and the cars towed. Uh, so this happened uh, just last week, like on Friday, um, that uh, late at night, um, Oh, there's even an update. Fantastic. Um, so uh, they were clocked at driving at least 71 miles an hour. That's the That was the quote in the original article. At least 71 miles an hour, which is 26 miles per hour more than the posted 45 mile an hour speed <laughs> limit they happen to be in. Uh, lo and behold, according to Kentucky's WNKY, uh, Thim, one of the GM employees, age 27, was caught driving one Corvette at 120 miles an hour. And uh, Durkitz, uh, age 30, also a GM employee, was caught driving at 100 miles an hour. A third Corvette on the scene, quote, was not participating in the racing. <laughs> <laughs> Various local news outlets report that Thim and Durkitz posted $1,000 bail and are scheduled for a pretrial hearing at the Warren District Court on February 18th. That's funny. <laughs> A third or fourth Corvette was on the scene, caught twiddling his thumbs. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, those guys were... Do, do, I was... Uh, suspension. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Cop was like, well, we saw them go by, but we didn't pull them over for another hour because I got a free test ride. <laughs> right. um, so GM quoted, uh, quote, we are aware of the incident involving our test vehicles and are currently investigating, end quote. Safety remains our overriding priority here at General Motors. We have no further comment at this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, they probably want to know more of how did these cars get out. No, they they, they do do testing in the area. Mm. Uh, this is not unheard of. However, getting arrested for the testing <laughs> is is something that uh, is. Uh, could this even be considered bad PR? And that's what I've been wondering. Because well, I mean, like driving that car, right? If that's just you're going to be seen even yeah. more than the C7. And the C7 was a wonderful looking vehicle. I'm disgusted that I want a C8 yeah. because I've never been a Corvette guy. I have never, ever been like, oh, I really like a Corvette. Yeah. If I found a Corvette, I would want to buy a Corvette. It, it's just not a car that speaks to me. The C8 speaks to me. Dual clutch, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, hard top convertible. It speaks to me on a very, very deep level. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's what I imagine driving an F430 Ferrari was like 10 years ago. It's probably that level or possibly even yeah. higher. Uh, and an F430 is like one of my like top tier, like I want it. Like F430, Audi, Audi R8, uh, Corvette C8. There, there's my... There, there's your top three. Gold, right? yeah, gold right. silver, bronze. <laughs> right. And, and But what disgusts me even more is that like the possibility of like, I'm probably going to buy a C8 at some point. Um, because I've, again, I've never been a Corvette guy. I've never even considered them like on my tier. And all honestly, in a couple of years, a used one is probably going to be forty-two. Yeah, right. You know, they're going to be plentiful. Yeah, they're, they're going to be making them like hotcakes and selling them just as fast. Yeah. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of C8s out there. There's going to be some deals to be had. So yeah, <clears throat> if you want to see a, if you want to see seven, maybe not a bad time to scoop one up right after the C8 releases. Yeah. So the last of the traditional Corvettes. <laughs> Because, uh, as you know, every Corvette is one of one. Yeah. Well, this year, they only made 113 with this particular color, and mine has the bonus big brake package with the sport wheels. And, and, and mine also has the blue racing stripe down the center console. Now, only three of them had that. So, like, yeah. mine's, like, an exceedingly well, rare yeah. trip. They, they only use the midnight blue on these 100. Now, this is midnight blue. Midnight. Right. This is midnight and one. Uh, go watch the Vin Wiki uh, with uh, with Mexican Stig talking about one of one Corvettes. That's amazingly oh, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Audi R8 V10. I would actually take a twin turbo... Uh, V8 over the V10. I guess the V8s are phenomenally better reliable. Um, and just here in twin turbo spool up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, g give me a twin turbo V8 over, over the V10. Uh, and, I, and I know there's no replacement for displacement. I've, I've, I've heard that argument. But um, well, the Ferrari has a GM transmission. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1987 Toyota Corolla. I drove one of those for a little while. A friend of mine had one of those. I've never owned one personally. Uh, one of my favorite all-time cars is the... Uh, I had a 95 Toyota Celica. Um, and uh, it was the GTS model. Had the 2.2 liter engine. Uh, Five-speed manual. But always on my bucket list of cars has been a, a Celica GT4. Which yep. is the, the all-wheel drive rally version of the Celica. Oh. Uh, there was actually one for sale in Portland. A proper JDM right-hand drive uh six speed twin turbo oh. 19,700 like I, I seriously considered trading in my <laughs> car to go get it um but yeah get a dodge yeah no like I'm not a Corvette guy but I respect them Dodge no I, I'm, I'm sorry I mean maybe it was like it was a like classic sure yeah. but like, I understand the Hellcat has 707 horsepower, but I'd eventually like to turn. Well, even, <laughs> even like the late, if you go get the upgraded of upgraded, it's like yeah. uh, 1,020. How much are the R35's GTR in the States? They're still rather spendy. They're still in that 35, 40,000 range for like a good one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen them in the 20s. Um, but, uh, but, you know, Dodge, even even like a Hellcat, even like a, no, I, I'm just not a fan of that. I mean, if you want to go straight, yeah, like you said. If you Raw to... muscle in a straight line has never really appealed to me, which is kind of like why I respected the Corvettes because Corvettes always been the most exotic American car to well, me. They, that in the Ford they GT. All, yeah, especially recently within the past 10 years, the Corvette has been really pushing to compete with European. The, the later C6s, the, yeah. especially the C7 when you came out with the styling. And, the and, styling, and it was, was it C6 or 7 where they really went to the rear engine? And No, the, the C8s is the first rear engine. Is it? The, the new one. 
is the okay, first movie. Okay, then I yeah. know the wars. Did they do the independence uh, um, um, suspension on each individual wheel? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but uh, it was supposed to have basically you could turn as Top Gear say you can turn in this car. Yeah. Uh, yes, and there is a new Mustang coming out, but they're all electric, aren't they? Scott, I'm going to ban you for that comment. Uh, I see Jeff in an SRT4. That's a Dodge Neon. <laughs> it's not a Dodge Neon. It's an SRT4. Watch the regular car review. You'll get that. Yeah. Oh, that's a Dodge Neon. It's a Dodge Neon. It's a Dodge Neon. It's a Dodge Neon. It's just a Dodge Neon. <laughs> it's a Dodge Neon with a V6 and a turbo. That's... That's ugly and, and they wasted a turbo. Yeah. Well, it's, it's probably only like this big. Mustang 350R. Eh. Even an R34GR here is over 100K. Um, 150K for a Camaro here. Ouch. Has to, oh, has to be converted to right-hand drive. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Mustangs have a right, couple of right-hand drives now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mustang is a world car. It's a global car, so they do that. Uh, FD RX-7 is on my list. That's always been on my list. I, I have a sweet spot for rotaries. RX-8 was one of my bucket cars for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, until, like, like an RX-7, if it's properly maintained, they'll still do 120 to 150,000 miles before, like, major service, like Apex Seals and yep. things like that. The RX-8s didn't make it past 80. And, and they're just... <clears throat> As someone who drives a car a lot, they're not all that reliable for me. Especially if you start putting some juice through them and actually getting more than the 220 horsepower they're rated for. You know, yep. you put put even a single turbo and you get 300 out of it. Uh, those things chew through Apex seals like pizza at a Weight Watchers convention. <coughs> uh, I love that we're in car talk now. Yeah. Buick Encore, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you. I reserved a Nissan Altima, and they gave me a flipping Buick Encore for a rental car. I had to drive that car for a week. I thought the, the Nissan uh, Versa that I had last year was a terrible car. Well, it's still worse than the Encore, but the Encore is a very close second. Uh, yeah, Mustang GT in Australia is about 70000 The newer ones are about 70000 here uh, when you start getting into the GTs and uh, and the 350Rs and things like that. Um, I th think Ford still starts the Mustang at, at twenty nine nine for the for the V6 model. Um, then the, the Turbo 4 is available for like thirty two or something like that. So they're, they're not bad. Three rotor for the win, absolutely. Um, I owned a Mazda Protege 94. I missed that car. I had a 91 Mazda 626 Turbo, and I loved that car. Mm -hmm. Loved that car. Uh, I has a WRX STI. What year? I want to know what year. Do you have a Bug Eye WRX? Because I'm interested. <laughs> uh, take a page from Bitwit. Go RS3. I've never been a huge fan of the RS3. Like, it's a nice car. I don't disparage it. But it's not like like a... I'm gonna go out and buy an, an RS. Yeah. Like, like, like I, like I like the Audis, but if I'm gonna spend, you know, seventy grand, I'm gonna find a used R8. Uh, I'm not gonna go buy an RS3. I drive an 04 Stratus. Oh boy, 200 horsepower of mildly annoyed V8. Uh, what you need to do is go down with like a little chisel and knock a hole in your exhaust. Now you'll have a rattle can right behind your catalytic converter. Yeah. So it comes out of there just a little bit more angry. Um, the old NSX, uh, Senna edition. Nice. Those are nice. I like yeah. those. I always thought those looked... Um, I did have a 1985, uh, RX-7 anniversary edition with a 13B for a while. Really? For about a month. Drove them for a month. It was terrible. Um, so the previous guy thought he was an electrician and could also work on suspension and he couldn't do either. And, uh, it was awful. Everything you hit, dunk, dunk. <laughs> Um, so I, I went and test drove the car. I got it up to 25 miles an hour and then paid him like 300 cash for the car. And then I got it up to like 45 miles an hour and the whole front end went... Oh, yeah. So it, it was, the, the ball joints were absolutely shot. Everything was just garbage in that thing. Um, yeah. That was one of my worst car buying experiences was learning how to properly vet a car, walk around a car, inspect it. 
You never uh, buy a car at night. Luckily, it only burned me for about 300 bucks. And in fact, a couple of weeks later, or about a month later, I sold it for $500 to a guy who drove it out of my driveway. There you go. Uh, I, I, I let him cold start it. I at, let him do everything else. 24 miles an hour? <laughs> it took him... It, it was his first five-speed. <laughs> Yeah, it took him 20 minutes to get out of my driveway. <laughs> uh, funny, it, it didn't do that yesterday after that grinding. Yeah, uh, Dream Build is a 94 Nissan 240SX with an LS3. Uh, not a terrible way to go. Um, the Viper GTS. Eh. Yeah. The Acura SX found a found a 2017 Acura NSX for eighty three thousand. That's a good deal. That's a really good deal. Shove a Maxima engine in, dude. That that ninety four two forty that would freaking sing with like a a, a VQ three point five. Yep. God, that would be a good car. Yeah. Uh, little car talk here. Little on, car talk here on Talking uh, Heads. Okay, we got a couple more minutes. We got one more Elko, and we got. R one remind more. me of car talk after the show. I have something to talk to you about. Okay, <laughs> and we got uh, one more beverage. One more beverage. Do we? Yeah. Oh. We have one more beverage for our car talk. I hope I delayed it long enough. No, I made sure to watch the time. No, no. Uh, all right, let's get some some proper. No. Yeah, either one, either one. I like these. You're gonna do the coops. The coops. All right, we're doing coops. Just don't deserve this. All right, all right. This is the first beverage that's been in my new coops. I finally bought coops. Those that aren't subscribers to my channel, coupe will, if you're European, will know that uh, I did a MD 2020 uh, roundup. Roundup for the year. 2020. I think he had a bottle of Roundup in there too. <laughs> and one of my concoctions was trying to carbonate MD 2020 to see. If it would make it any better. I don't think it did. Let's find out. Remember rum. <laughs> <laughs> smell the raspberry. I can already smell it. <laughs> wow. Look at that foam up. <laughs> now we know it's carbonated. It smells like a blue Jolly Rancher. Oh, it yeah. smells sweet. Yeah. It smells of sugar. That's right. Oh, what what is this little pour? I was there. trying not to get all the foam. Oh, okay. There we go. I doubt we'll drink this much. All right, a little Romulan ale. Romulan ale. I'm talking this points. is probably the closest we'd ever get to an illegal substance. Right. It should be illegal. This should be illegal. All right. John's homemade Romulan ale. And the reason we're doing this is we are getting into some Star Trek talk. Yes. So buckle up. Oh, it's warm. Is that better than the Bud Light Orange? This is 14%. It does have that going for it. This Ooh. is warm. Yeah, you left it out. Yeah, we left it out. I forgot to put it in the fridge. Shouldn't yeah. have done that. What do you what do you think? You already said it, it was horrible cotton candy. So that's what he says. There's a cotton candy aftertaste. Yep. There's totally a cotton candy aftertaste. Um it smells like I imagine a liquefied, melted blue raspberry Jolly Rancher would taste, but it's like sicklier sweet than that. Yes. Um, like it's got like a similar nose, like a because I, I I love me some Jolly Ranchers, John. Oh yeah, I see. A it. Giant ass bag right there. I love me some Jolly Ranchers. That is my candy o choice. Um, and and this reminds me of like sucking on a blue Jolly Rancher but somehow still way sweeter than sucking on pure sugar. Yeah. Right? And, it, and there's some funky flavors going on on top. Yeah, and then there's an aftertaste that just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just a weird spicy cotton candy aftertaste. Uh, it is a little spicy, isn't it? It's, it's got that harsh alcohol. Yeah. Uh, actually, very I, think, cheap. I think warming it up has actually helped this beer, or this this beverage. Um, it's not terrible. It's It's... It's not good. Right. This, um, I, I think I said it was a, a, like the blue raspberry Slurpee. Like a melted blue raspberry Slurpee. Actually, yeah. And then you melted cotton candy in it. Yeah. That's what you did. A little cotton candy swirler. Yeah. Yeah. Demonetized by the Starfleet order. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. 
All right. All right. So da, something. Da, 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 da. Special. <laughs> Something special in our hearts, uh, Star Trek. If you haven't seen our this show at all, doesn't matter which host is on. That's right. Um, Star Trek Picard renewed, already renewed for season two. Woo! Woo! I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. I am freaking watching every second of this. Oh yeah, I, it's. I don't even care. The name alone is better than the whole season one and two of Discovery. Mm-hmm. I mean, just even the trailers. You got Seven of Nine in there. That You got uh, Hugh in there is going to be in season one. Um, a Borg. Something to do with the Borg storyline of what happened to them. Borg, Romulan, all yeah. just... Yeah. Ah, it, it's very tantalizing. Core TNG fanboy. Yes. Uh, and then they're throwing in just just specks of TNG here and there. Yeah. Just homages, you know. Again, the one thing I hope is this is not just fan service. Yeah. There, thus far, there's been a lot of fan service, but there's been enough teasers to leave me still very hopeful for the main story, for the delivery, for the direction, for art direction. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if most of the fan service is episode one and two. I, I believe episode one and two are just going to be pure fan service. Yeah. Or at least 50% of it, you know, the first first 45 minutes, we're probably going to see at least two, maybe three cameos mm-hmm. of someone from TNG or, or the Star Trek universe. We already know of a number of different cameos that are officially happening. Yeah, um, but we don't know what episode they're showing yeah. up in. Um, well, I have a pretty good inkling when Riker's going to show up. You on. won't. Because he's directing episodes three and four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, although maybe he's in episode one and two. Who knows? Because uh, remember, episode one has to set the scene for how Picard is aged. And um, he's always said if he went back to Jean-Luc Picard, he didn't want to play the same Jean-Luc Picard. He wanted to play someone different. Yeah. Um, this is, We're going to see more of a broken man. <laughs> Troy is pissed that she's in HD. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, this is going to be a broken Picard. This is going to be a much more solemn, much more destroyed. Um, So if you follow the Kelvin timeline, that is the original Star Trek timeline, you know, chronological order of things, we know that sometime in the future, after the events of TNG, um, that Romulus' star goes supernova and explodes. Yes. And... Romulus is kind of able to be saved, but the Vulcans fail in being able to do so. Uh, more specifically, uh, Ambassador Spock fails in being able to save Romulus from destruction. Uh, supposedly, they are following this timeline, not the looped back around timeline yeah, so of the new t- of the new Star Trek. Essentially, the very first J.J. Abrams Star Trek, that first ten minutes mm-hmm. is technically supposed to be still in the Kelvin. It is still canon. Yeah, right. still canon. And when Spock travels back in time, that's now an alternate timeline. Mm-hmm. We're still following. Romulus exploded. What happened then? Mm-hmm. You know, that's right. what we're, we're following. So what we do know of the story so far is that Picard leads essentially an evacuation effort of Romulus and saves a decent chunk of their population. Yeah. And the Romulans already held Picard in pretty high regards. Even though he's a human, even though he's technically an enemy... They respected him, and that's always been something I liked about the Romulans. Is is they're very, they're the Vulcans, but evil. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're orderly, they're logical, they're you know, um, they're badasses. They're very yeah. strong, uh, but but they're respectful, and uh, and they are they always respected Picard. Well, now they respect him as essentially a hero of Romulus. Is the story that I'm getting. Well. It, They've given some teasers. I don't know how the girl fits into the story thus far. Yeah. But they've given some teasers about the survivors of Romulus are essentially experimenting with Borg Borg. technology to do something. To to enhance their... Either their, wherever they moved to, Mm -hmm. or to maybe enhance, you know... um... The uh, increase how fast they repopulate themselves. Maybe you know 
form like this Romulan Borg collective that's owned by Romulus, and and then that's how they regrow their population. Yeah, maybe even like a, a Borg workforce. Because you see essentially what are Borg concentration camps. Yeah. Um, and uh, and there's signs up. This is no assimilations for like 890 days, and things like that. Um, and we know the girl is at one point being held in a concentration camp. She's she's one of the prisoners there. Yeah, so you, you automatically think, okay, she's got to be Borg-esque. Right. Or something. And the fact that they're bringing back Borg characters in Hugh and Seven of Nine, two yeah. of the most well-known Borg, and really the only two humans we've ever crossed back over. Yeah. Um, it's kind of an interesting setup to what the universe is going to be. Um, we don't know much story beyond that. We do know there's going to be Riker and Troy, and they are married still. Uh Worf has been rumored as a cameo uh, because he was seen on set for a number of days. Michael Dorn. Yep. Uh, not in costume, but at least on set, uh, which typically means... They'd probably put makeup on really quick. If you spent more than a day, you're probably going to be in... Yeah, you're not just sitting there hanging out with your buddies. Right. Uh, we know Data is in this. We know Jerry Ryan 7 and 9. We know Hugh the yeah. Borg. Um, and there's also been some other announcements for, for uh, other returning cameras. cast members. Yeah. Um, but I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. Yeah, no, this, and, uh, although I am curious how, because there was talk of having each season be a standalone story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that they've already renewed it for season two is that they have probably an idea for another story. Well, remember, Patrick Stewart's 88 years old. Yeah. I, I don't mean to be very morbid about this. They're on limited time. If they want season two, they better produce it now. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, he says he's in good health. He says he's in good health, and, and by all respects, he probably is in good health. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Crusher is going to be in there, too. That's right. Uh, uh, Gates McFadden. Yeah. Uh, will Wheaton will not be, but he will be hosting the after show. Yes, Will Wheaton is hosting the Ready Room After Show, yeah. Yeah. which I think <laughs> is fantastic. It should have been called, shut up! <laughs> shut, shut up, Wesley! Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> Talking Trek, shut up, Wesley. <laughs> yes. Um, so no, that will be fantastic. Um, I, yeah, I know. I really wish that this was going to be airing. Um, for some reason, I thought it was the 28th, not 25th. 23rd. Or 23rd. I thought it was the 28th. I was like, oh, that's a Talking Heads day. That's, that's my talking as they right we're just gonna stream it and have everyone shut up <laughs> right. uh what day is it streaming? it's, it's a, next it's thursday thursday and i was like you know. uh, we may have to do like a live viewing on patreon or something i know like that. oh that would be so fun like a live maybe well, like a live least, reaction show. or at least like yeah live reaction live chat yeah on patreon its own channel <laughs> as long as Riker is pronounced dead i'm fine with it all what i love Riker. how dare Riker, you Riker's the best and he even has his beard back that's right yeah unlike that whatever the hell he did in insurrection yeah smooth as an android's bottom no <laughs> yeah. although you know what i did see was so there was the original trailer that had uh data in it and everyone complained oh data looked really puffy mm -hmm. and i guess they re-digitized him which i don't like the re-digitation i like the original one well, no, the, the re-digitized is less puffy. No, I, I like the smoother surface. Really? Yeah. I did, well, I, I don't mind smooth surface, but they made him really, like, puffy. Yeah. And this other one kind of made him look more similar to how he looked in uh, the last couple of movies, Insurrection and, right. and whatnot. I understand he's an android, so he's not technically supposed to age. Right. But uh, I also think they got his eye color wrong. It seems to be a different shade of yellow. Yeah. Well, we know he's talking to Data. Is it Data in Data's body? That's my big question. I don't. I because I personally think these are going to be either either flashbacks simulations. Or, or simulations or haunted dreams. Yeah. You know, so, some kind of something that's recurring, and these are memories. Or I think you're not far off because Data has been seen in trailers in like three different uniforms. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think it's going to be more of a haunting thing for Picard. It, it's like, and it might be. Like, you know, because he was supposed to be kind of Data's biggest example for human. Yes. Being, uh, being you know, humanity. <laughs> Thanks for pronouncing it the Ferengi way. Human. <laughs> human. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Ferengi. Human. See, that's the other thing. I would love to see little bits of humor in this 
Because this looks very dramatic, very action-packed. Go little bits of some Ferengi, yep. you know, some some humor in it. Yep. Wasn't Wrecker's Beard credited with saving Next Gen Season 2? There's actually some really funny stories about Wrecker's Beard, specifically how well manicured it was. <laughs> um, because they would go out on test, and he would do a couple test shots with it. And they literally go, okay, raise it up a millimeter right here. So right, right at his jawline or right at his, at his cheek line, he needs to, you know, just square that... Square that off right there. And so he would go and they'd shave or they'd add stuff back in. <laughs> and so it was all just literally like airbrushed on uh, for a while. <laughs> no, what saved season two was the Riker maneuver over the chair. That's right. Yeah. Or him standing on a rock. Yeah. <laughs> hey, a rock. This looks good. May I join you there, Commander? Well, yes, you can. <laughs> One or both. Yeah, yeah. Orville's good too. I really like the Orville. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, it got delayed a whole year. Yeah. All they need is Garrick to make a cameo. Yes, oh, that would be great too. Yes. There's been no DS9 love so far. There needs to be some DS9 love. There needs to be Avery Brooks still pissed off at the card. <laughs> I, I don't care if Kira's there. No, no, it needs to be Worf is captain of the Defiant. Yes. And then he's like flying that around. And then Riker still says, that's a nice little ship. Yeah. <laughs> Tough little ship. <laughs> little. Yeah. That's it. I'd be happy with that. Yeah. I, I, could, I could see, you know, I'd probably see a Defiant flying in the background. I could see that being yeah. like, oh, that's our nod to DS9. Or, uh, because remember, the Defiant was a prototype ship. It was one of one. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's flying like what that became as a warship well no because it, there was th there ended up being three because there was the defiant then there was the one that those recruits took because yeah. they thought that was the defiant which wasn't yeah. and then there was the second one they got renamed the defiant I think it was the odyssey or rubicon or something like that and yeah. they renamed it the defiant after the defiant blew up in like yeah. the season finale so technically there have been three yeah of those type of ships and yeah. that's it but they're all technically yeah, prototype they, designs. Yeah, because they were NX designs. Yeah. I, I'd love to see an MCC design. Uh, of that. Modernized design of the Defiant. You know, more warship hard nose. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see. I'm curious who is... Uh, because So they have the prequel comics that are supposed to be canon, which tells... Derek, the flying trailer, uh, Taylor, and nothing more. <laughs> yes. Just a... Just an average... Honest Taylor, Taylor. sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, I think there'll be... A, Everything I told you was the truth, even the lies. Especially, especially the, the lies. lies. Yeah. Garrick was like... Garrick and... Um, Bashir. Bashir. No, Garrick and Quark were the two best things of DS9. Yeah. They really were. I mean... I don't know. I, I'm really a fan of Cisco. I love Cisco. I, I just... I don't like huge his fan acting. Of Cisco. Not a huge fan of... Um, well, I'm a fan of Kira. Not a huge fan of the way they went with her character all of the time. Like, even after, like, six years on the station, she was still, like, shoot from the hip kind of. Yeah. Like, I, I wish she would have learned a little bit of resolve, a little bit of a diplomacy, a little bit of, like, let's figure this out instead of just, like, I'm just going to go punch something. Yeah. Because that was absolutely I'm cool. always angry because of the Z occupation. Z zero to pissed off in... in yeah in zero point occupation right occupation point seven right <laughs> uh, um plain and simple garrick that's right um but uh, i love what they did with bashir he was always an interesting character i really like that o'brien got to grow and yeah O'Brien was and, nice and when not loved dax's character i even liked esri dax i wasn't hated esri now dax. remember she only got one, one season, season yeah to fulfill a character that the others had had seven years to I, I guess into. that was my problem was Ezri Dax and then it was the last season and there's all this important stuff going on and then they threw in we gotta build this characters right we got and then they threw in all these episodes yeah like three episodes of nothing but Dax character yeah. building and it's and like, like that crap should have happened in season two yeah. and in fact it did and you killed her yeah exactly so... and, then, and then we're on the last season you've announced it's the last season and you're doing it again I I would have rather not brought back Dax as a character. We we see Ezri 
uh, as like the 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 only trill that's on the ship and the, yeah. the Dax symbiote had some problems and we needed to find a host she was the only host I'm dealing with all these emotions. Well, good luck to you. Thank you so much. And maybe make like one or two more appearances. Don't make her a crew member. That was such horse crap. Yeah, or even just have her show up on the last like seven episodes. I'm Dax. I'm right. here to help, you know, because I saw the memories. I saw the feelings. Right. You don't have to explain any story other than I'm still Dax. Yeah. And then go off. And then, and then just be like, okay, we're all cool. Hey, Dax is still kind of part of the mm-hmm. show. Yeah. But yeah, don't include her in the whole season uh, seven. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, if you look her up, she's now part of the cover. They don't have the original actress. Right. So, I don't remember her name. Ooh. Uh, Terry Farrow. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't mind Kira's and Odo's love story. I, I agree. I, I didn't mind it. It, it was... I, I love how they kind of did, like, a noir style with their love story. It was very, like, 50s as far as storytelling yeah. goes. I thought it was great. Uh, that they were trying to do this um, two working professionals. Obviously, there's chemistry there. We're not going to let it interfere with our jobs. We're both hardened. Pro- yeah. You know, we do what we do, but we're still attracted to each other. We still have ke- chemistry there. I liked that. I liked the way they told that story. Yeah. It, it, within the Star Trek universe, I think that was one of the better love stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Better than any Riker love story. No, Riker was like, awesome. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, how awesome can you be? I want to know what the awesome, con- I mean, how awesome ha- do you have to be to be like, I just flirt with everyone and date all these women a whole lot while, while my ex-girlfriend is still on the ship and I still, my ex-girlfriend still wants me. Yeah. And then I still marry my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, Riker's just like, Riker's like, my ex-girlfriend went and did it with a Klingon. She came back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Not just any Klingon. Worf, son of Mo. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, speaking of love stories, Star Trek can be horny as hell, but not. But it's not simple all the... Yeah. Interesting. So there's, a, there's an io9... Story on uh, Star Trek love triangles. Interesting. Talk about power couples. <laughs> right. Yeah. Curious to see where uh, where Picard. the new Star Trek goes. Yeah. Um, definitely going to be interesting. Looking forward to it. Should be super fun. Yeah. Well, I could cry tears too. He's like, what are they um, doing? Dominion War on DS9 was the best. Sacrifice of Angels was so good. Um, that whole that was groundbreaking television for the level of special effects they had in Sacrifice of Angels it, it really was the the level of depth they went into with the space combat yeah. the 3D flying around and that was all done practically that was all like 3D modeled ships sometimes there were com- some computer renders in the background but they were all like captured and just interposed um, but the, the three look up like the 3D camera rig that they used to film that oh my god it's yeah. cool um yeah. Uh what was I gonna say? Da, 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 DS9. I, I, I had a thought and I completely lost it. <laughs> I I had a good thought too. Well we were talking about it should be a good show, we're gonna have a good time watching it. Yeah. I said something about maybe we might get tears. Oh, Dominion War. Um if you are interested in a book series, there's a four part book series. Uh, called Star Trek The Dominion War Mm. Um, there's two parts that are TNG told from Picard's point of view of the Dominion War and there's two parts that are DS9 told from their point of view of the Dominion War and they are phenomenal Um, it is uh, uh, Picard and uh, Rolaren infiltrating a a a mining colony um, a a, a prison mining colony um, where they're mining um some kind of uh, uh, gravity repelling crystal out of black holes using Jem'Hadar warships um, in order to build artificial wormholes to bring the Jem'Hadar fleet through on a secondary wormhole. Mm. Um, and, and that whole TNG arc was amazingly well done. 
Um, the DS9 portion of it, I actually don't remember all that much. I've been meaning to go back and reread it lately because I, I probably read it 15 years ago. Oh, yeah. If not more than that. It's, it's been a while. Um, it, it's probably been 20 years. Um, I was uh, much, much younger and a little less hairy when I read it. <laughs> um, but those were both phenomenal. Um, there's, a, there's a whole prison camp side of things uh, told from uh, uh, a Federation prisoner. Um, uh, uh, the opening scene of the Federation prisoner in the mining colony is uh, he's supposed to be working on uh, like this armature, like welding an armature or something like that. And he's out in space and in, in an exosuit and, and welding and whatnot. And I guess his Jemadar guard gets on and says, uh, prisoner, da 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 you are 32 seconds behind schedule. You have five minutes to narrow the gap where you will be terminated or you will lose privileges. And privileges yeah. meant you less food and sleep privileges and you're basically dead. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, uh, uh, and it says, uh, I, I waved to him to acknowledge, uh, uh, wondering if he'd noticed that only one finger was held above the others. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of writing throughout the entire series of books and it's four books and it is well worth the read uh, so Star Trek The Dominion War it's a four part series I think I have one of the Dominion War books I, I have to see if I can get the set it is worth picking up I, I'm telling you it's, it's very very well done uh, Ro Laren was supposed to be the Kira character but Michelle Forbes didn't want to come back and yeah I, I had heard that and I think that's a shame um, but at the same time, I like what they did with the Kira character, and I'm glad that it wasn't just a rehashed Rolaren, because I don't know that Rolaren would have played all that well. Yeah. She couldn't have been a station commander. She was only an ensign the last time we saw her, and that was only three years prior. Uh, so it's not like she's all of a sudden going to climb the ranks of the Bajoran military, and, and now she's fighting in the tunnels and everything. Yeah. She joined Starfleet at a very young age once she got away. Yeah. And, and her character just wouldn't have fit with that environment. Yeah. So... Yeah, that, that's always been my... <laughs> Damn it, I just lost the game. The game. Oh. Damn it! Uh, yeah. Anyway. Anyways, it is 10.13. 10.13. Uh, instead of Q&A, you got like 25 minutes of Star Trek talk. And a little uh, car talk. And a little uh, Romulan Ale. And Romulan Ale. That's right. Jeff apparently enjoys it more than I do. <laughs> I'm drinking it anyway. It burns in the nostrils. Mm -hmm. You gotta just pretend it's actually wrong with you now. That's how you get <laughs> anyway, thank you for wrap. Anyway, thank you for watching episode 115 here on Talking Heads. It has been fun. Join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time for the latest in beer and tech news. Make sure to like this video if you're watching the replay and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. If you like John and his beer content, follow him at Hops and Brews on just about any social media platform you can imagine. Uh, he would certainly appreciate the subs. Uh, you could be following a lord. That's right. Lord Hops and Brews. Good night, everybody. See you guys later.